dark. What the hell do you think you're playing at, Fred? It's gone three o'clock, them towels should be on them pumps. Oh, come it, Lynch. I'm lumbered here on my own and you're doing a vanishing act. Hey, running about after Lady Walker's not my idea of fun, you know. I no sooner get down them stairs than she's shouting for summat. I'm up and down like a fan dancer's drawers. That's another thing, innit? Them headaches of hers, it's all kidology, you know. If she wants to know what's suffering really, she wants one of my hangovers. Fellas, come on, Potts, please, and come on. And she's not coming to the wedding reception. We've got to muddle through without her. Oh, marvellous, innit? <laughs> If out goes wrong, we'll get the blame. You'll get the blame. It was you that put her to bed in the first place with your fighting and brawling and generally giving this pub a bad name. Well, look, I pull my weight round here. When the going gets tough, I'm here, and I don't go sloping off like some I could mention. Don't you start picking on Betty. Well, she knows how we fix. You should never have gone to that church. You know how Betty likes a wedding. Surely you don't begrudge her the pleasure of seeing Eddie and Marion get wed, do you? Nobody asked me if I, if I could go to the church. You? I'd have loved to have gone to that church. I'd have loved to have seen the wedding. Nothing would have given me more pleasure than to see that big fat idle git put a noose round his neck. That's enough, mate. I'm perishing. <laughs> right, my good man. The rovers and don't spare the horses. Oh, we've done it. Mrs. Edward Yates. Oh, Eddie. Give us the kids. No, people are looking. Oh, let them look. They're only jealous. Mm. They could win prizes for it. Well, come on, Jack, let's get going. I'm trying hard. Oh, don't tell me the flaming cars broke down. It was like as rain this morning, purring like a big cat. Oh, my head testing. I knew I shouldn't have listened to you. I said, didn't I, get a proper firm? You should be setting off. People are waiting. I think couple's supposed to go first. Well, I know that. Come on, duckhead. Don't panic, don't panic. Oh, marvellous. Well, this looks very nice, I must say. What's to do? Transport arrangements have been botched. That's what's to do. Now, don't start, Mum. Hey, come on, Eddie, lad. I've got the jag just along the road here. I'll take you and Marion in that. Norris, you're a belter. Uh, this is Norris, by the way, love. I guess that. So. Come, come on, on love. Hey, hang on, me. hang on. You've got a car here. Where are you going? <laughs> hey. I should have carried you over the threshold. I mean, this place is my home. Shut up, you dark thing. Hello, Betty. Hello, love. Every happiness, love, and all you wish yourself. Thank you very much. Oh, you look great, kid. You're a lucky lad, Eddie. I know. She keeps telling me. Oh, best of luck to the parents. Thanks, love. Can I give him a kiss? Just one. Right. Oh, dear. <laughs> now, big up to her, or I'll swing for you. Oh, shit. Hey, uh, best of luck, you ain't seeing that straight. Right, uh, and you, love. Hey, Carl will be all right out there, will he? Yeah, as long as you like. Uh, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm bursting for a pint. Oh, uh -huh. I told Mrs. Walker to give everybody a drink when they came in, you know. Oh, what about the sparkling wine for the toast? Oh, yeah, that's down to me, you know. Okay, yeah. love. This it. selects already whenever you want to go through. Uh, now then, Mary and love, what are you having? Hey, you put your money away, Norris. There'll be uh, plenty of time for that. Plenty of time for you to flash your wallet later. Hey, it's worth seeing his wallet. <laughs> See? I told you she'd get here. Your mother's been miring the soul out of me in the car. I knew there'd be trouble, Eddie. As soon as I saw that car you ordered. Yeah, well, we're here now, so let's enjoy ourselves, shall we? I didn't like the look of it at all. Or the driver come to that. Damn, blast them. Flooding buckets of pits, you flicking thing. Can I help? Hello, Vicar. We've had some lovely presents. Oh, yes, lovely, lovely presents. Lovely. They're all laid out at Mrs Tanner's house. Oh, yes, well, of course, we live next door to her, you know. Oh, and then with Eddie having lived with us, well, uh, he looks at me and Stan like his mum and dad, you see. So I said to Stan, our present must be quality. What do we get him in the end? <laughs> Just listen to him. What do we get him in the end? <laughs> it's his sense of humour. Uh, no, the toaster was ours. Oh, yes. I saw that. Uh, where's the money, them toasters, you know? We just put a slice of bread under the grill. It's quicker. <laughs> Excuse us. Come on, Sam. <laughs> Will you stop showing me up? And what have you got your tie unfastened for? Well, I'm not comfy all tied up. You're not here to be comfortable. You're here to behave yourself. And another thing, go easy on the drink. I got an idea that shocking bad this morning, I was. I'm not surprised after last night. We didn't have much. You what? You were at it all day. Ah, but I pace myself, don't I? Don't fling it down like you, young lad. Slow and steady. It makes all the difference. Well, how come you felt rotten this morning, then? Yeah, I had a bad pie. A bad pie? Yeah, meat and potato. You know, I knew it was off when he ate it. 
And the second one was manky as well. Anyway, it's a bit more easier today. On the drink? On the pies. So, you're pleased with your ring, are you? Yeah, it's lovely. You know, some of that women's lib lot would think that was a sign of bondage. Well, I don't. It's on my finger, not through my nose. <laughs> <laughs> That's your place across the road, is it? Yeah, Denham's. Can I sell you any? <sighs> not me, mate. Must be a chancy game, that clothes lack. Well, you have to know what you're doing, otherwise you can get hurt, yeah. yeah same in my game. Road haulage, containers. Can you sew a pair of jeans yourself? Yeah, if I have to. Better than some of my girls, as a matter of fact. That way it stops them conning me. <laughs> <laughs> Same with my drivers, eh? There isn't a dodge they can pull on me that I don't know about. It's on it all myself, haven't I? Hey, Eddie, look, Maggie's here. Oh, oh. oh look at that. Congratulations. <laughs> you know Harry, don't you, Harry? This is Eddie, Marion's husband. Pleased to meet you. And you. Hope you'll both be very happy. So, what are you having to drink? Let me get you something. Uh, scotch for me, please. Maggie likes gin and tonic. Oh, what a lovely thing. It's a little siren. Oh, he's beautiful. Can I hold it? Yes, help yourself. You might as well get the practice. Oh, oh. oh. little soldier, eh? Oh. Aren't you lovely? Eh? What's that? We're closed. Hang about. What do you want, Ducky? We've got a wedding on. I'm a guest. Have you got an invite? Oh, don't play silly beggars for that driver, huh? Oh, take a runny jug. Go on, Ducky. Bog off. Look, uh, I I've got an invitation. Oh, uh, sorry, Vicar. I, I didn't see you there. Oh. Uh, come in, sir. Oh, thank uh, you. It's uh, straight through in the. Uh, in the select. Mm. I'll have a pint detective in the back. Hey, hang about, Ducky. You're a gate crasher, you are. Well, that's one yourself, then. Oh, well, that's different. It's all down to Yatesy, isn't it? <laughs> Hello, Mike. Hello. Long time no see. Not long enough, as far as I'm concerned. Don't be bitter, Mike. It doesn't suit you. How do you expect me to feel? Well, I don't know. That's why I just came over for a quiet word. How are you these days? You don't give a damn how I feel. So why go through the motions of pretending you do? I can see I'm wasting my time. That's my son in that caricot, isn't it? Uh, do you want to look at him? Why did you bring him here, eh? What are you trying to do, rub my nose in it? Of course not. He's my baby. I'm his mother. He goes where I go. Does he know? Your husband? Or have you made a fool of him as well? I take it you mean, does he know he isn't Mark's father? Well, of course he does. He's not an idiot. What else does he know? He doesn't know you're Mark's father, if that's what you're asking. He knows Mark's my baby, and that's all he cares about. He's happy. So am I, in case you're wondering. I'm not. Don't ever flatter yourself that I ever will be. This isn't the time or the place. Don't spoil Marion's wedding. Can I have us, ladies and gents? Got some messages here. I think you ought to know about them. Right, this card is from Rocky, Randy, Cedric, and all the lads at the Dust Bowl. It's the lads at the Zeppo, you know. I think it's a poem. Anyway, today's the day. Tonight's the night. We've shot the stalk, so you'll be all right. <laughs> they don't know nothing. It's just a coincidence, you know. We'll discuss it later. I've got a lot to say to you. I don't know what any of this means. Somebody will have to explain it to me later. Another card here, signed Cyril and Wesley. Hey, the McGregor lads. And this one, it's another poem, and it goes, Eddie Yates, a simple soul, bought a book on birth control, but judging by his wife's condition, he must have bought the wrong edition. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the tinkers, them lads. <laughs> you got to laugh, haven't you? <laughs> now then, ladies and gentlemen, in a minute or two, we will have the pleasure of seeing the happy couple make the first incision. Is your right, love? It only means to be cutting the cake. <laughs> <laughs> I could have done all that, you know. I'm better than all. Give over. You can't be better than the best man, can you? I mean, as uh, uh, contradiction in terms. Yes, like all the athletics. You got that joke off me. You can have it back if you want. Where's your time? I took it off. Oh, just look at you, right sloppy. I can't turn my back for a minute. I've known Eddie since we was kids. Running up and down Scotland's road together with a 
Shirts hanging out of the holes in our pants. Uh, Marion, I don't know, except one thing. She's got a lot of courage. She must have to take Eddie on. It's supposed to be amazing, mine. Going back to when we was kids and we used to play fencing. So remember that? And Eddie always used to be Robin Hood. Well, now he's met his maid, Marion. They're setting off on a big adventure together. But Eddie's not getting a band of outlaws. He's getting a bunch of in-laws. <laughs> Raise your glasses, ladies and gentlemen, and join me in a toast. The bride and groom, Marion and Eddie, and every happiness to them both. Marion and Eddie. <laughs> Better, love. Will you pass me a tonic? Hey. Well, oh, yeah, a tonic. Yeah, they are lovely. Do you know, I was watching you then. Oh. You were miles away. You'd a face on you as long as a gas man's mac. This is a wedding, you know. You're supposed to be happy and full of fun. Don't work with me, though. Weddings, I mean. I always get a bit sort of, you know, yonderly. Uh, well, you know why, don't you? Mm. All these weddings we go to, they're always somebody else. No, I don't say that. It's right. I'm the same as you. Mm. I could have a good strike and all. All over the place, thousands of women are getting proposed to and married, and what are we handmaidens at the bridal feast? Could be worse, I suppose. All right, we're not married. At least we're not married to them pair. Betty, love, you've just cheered me up. <laughs> Here. Have you seen Stan? Hang on. No, he's not there. Well, his jacket is, see? I've not seen him for a bit. Perhaps he's in the gents. Oh, I'll go and have a look. Right. How are you enjoying the wedding, Mrs. Yates? Smashing up to now. Amy, Mum seems to have cheered up and all. Mm, I'm glad to hear it. You know, when we were walking down that aisle, she was giving me the sort of look that kills hamsters at 30 paces. She's been giving it me on and off ever since. <laughs> Hey, listen, I've not told her about tonight. She thinks we're flying off to Benidorm. Oh, good, because if this lot find out we're staying the night in your bed, sis, we won't get a wink of sleep. Oh, you told me we wouldn't be sleeping anyway. Oh, that was when we were engaged. That was because I was trying to impress you. Now we're married, I don't have to bother. Okay. <laughs> Marion, please, I have to be going. It's Mark. He's getting a little bit windy, so we're best for you. Oh, thanks for coming, Maggie. Oh, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. You're flying off to Spain tonight, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, have a nice time. All the very best to both of you. Oh, hope you enjoyed yourselves. Look after her, Eddie. I will, don't worry. I'll see you out there. Okay. Da, 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 da. Here, what game do you think you're playing? First your tie, then your jacket. I'm surprised I didn't find your trousers in the middle of the road. What's up? What's up? You're supposed to be at that wedding reception, not doing a striptease and sneaking off home. Look, three beers for this lambskent. Get that tie on and your jacket and get back to that reception. You're going to have a good time if it's the last thing you do. Well, put it straight Get off. off. Hey, here they are, the happy pair. Come here, Eddie, give us the key. Hey, hang on, you have to speak to the missus. Hey, you'll tease me long enough. Come here. Here, here, here. Hey, you're not going yet, are you? I mean, the night's young, isn't it? Oh, I've got to go home and change. We're flying off to Benidorm tonight. Yes, you've been popping back to see you from time to time. Oh, you've got a tiger there, mate. I'll tell you what, she's got more go in her than your limo. Hey, 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 talking about that, I could do with the money before you go. Yeah, what? Listen, me and Marion had to catch your lift off my mate. And we've got to get a taxi out of Ringway. Which reminds me, you better be going if you're going to catch that taxi to the airport. Yeah, okay, Come on, love. Through, I'll see you later. Hey, yeah, I know it was a minor record, but a deal's a deal. Yeah, there's me old mucker. Hey, there's been man in the Northern Union. Have a drink with me, mucker. Go on, I'll have an half. Hey, grot man, there's a pipe for me, mucker. There's been man in the Northern Union. <laughs> hey, I'm going to be out of pocket with that car, OK? Look, you're getting nothing out of my pocket, I'm telling you. Put another large run in there, will you, Ben? I know weddings make people feel like drowning the sorrows, but you're caning it a bit, aren't you? Uh, so what if I am? Hey, I'm not getting at you, Mike. I know you're upset, and I know what's upset you. <laughs> no, you don't. Seeing Maggie again's brought this on, hasn't it? You're still carrying a torch for her, aren't you? You couldn't be more wrong. I saw the way you were looking at her, and... I could see you're upset. I couldn't care less if I never saw again in my life. 
Well, that's the truth. I hate her for what she did to me and what she's doing. I don't understand what you mean. Can you keep something to yourself? If you want me to, yes. Well, don't let me down here, because I'm going to tell you something now. It's my kid. Maggie's baby. I'm his father. I offered to marry her. I, I wanted to do the right thing to her. I, I wanted that kid. I'm sorry, Mike. I am really. You're a nice woman, but you sympathise and all that, but... When I see my son... and she's taking him away from me and... I know he's going to grow up calling someone else his dad. You don't know what it's like. Yes, I do. Now, take my word for it, because I don't want to talk about it. But I do know what it's like. Seems funny to think I'll be spending my wedding night here. Aye, it's not much on romance, is it? A bit short of moonlight and palm trees. Oh, it's not that. I suppose we'll have all that tomorrow night. Aye. Well, I won't disturb you, you know. I'll be upstairs, dead to the world. And I won't bring you a cup of tea in the morning, neither. But you can bring me one, if you like. Just You're before on. you go and catch your plane. You're on. <laughs> Come on, let's have a look at you. Turn around. Oh, that's smashing. Now, come on, let's go and collect your husband. <laughs> yeah, my husband. He is my husband, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you might as well know now, you might be my wife, but this is my best girlfriend. Ah. Well, for Mrs Ogden, I'll make an exception. <laughs> uh, hey, I like your going away outfit, Chuck. You look real lovely. Hey, she does, doesn't she? Yeah. Talking about going away, I've booked a taxi for about five minutes. Yeah, and I brought your case round from Elsie's. It's in the bar. Oh, sir, love. Hey, we've got time for a quick dance. Oh, Come on. Oh, hey, this is oh, hey, takes you back, doesn't it? Do you remember our wedding, Chuck? Aye, I do. It's one of them things you can't forget, and it? it's like your army number. When you've been through hell, <laughs> leaves its mark. Oh, me and Stan might have had us ups and downs, but I wouldn't swap it. Hey, let's face it, love, you wouldn't make up mental for him, would you, eh? You only get two donkey stones of a ragbone, man. Just <laughs> shut up, you. Me and Stan have had a very good marriage. That's the way it, Elder. But till I got married, I didn't know the meaning of the word happiness. Oh, you little old. And then it was too late. Oh, I'm sweet for you. Eddie, the taxi's here, mate. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, get in that taxi before you miss your plane. And what's more, watch out for them Spanish bullfighters. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Marion Love. I hope you have a nice time. I'll send you a card, mate. There's no need for that, love. Just you enjoy yourself. I didn't mean to shout at you. I was a bit upset, that's all. I know, Mum. But you are all right, are you, love? I'm very happy now. Everything's fine. <laughs> well, goodbye, Eddie. Oh. oh, you're a good lad. Oh, Sam, huh? I mean, Winifred. You can call me Ma if you want. I quite like it. <laughs> Tell her, love. I see your mum gets all me one piece. You have a good time, eh? <laughs> no good telling you to be careful, is it? <laughs> Too late for that, Uncle Will. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum's quite pleased about it, aren't quiet. She's looking forward to being a granny. Hey, come on, Mrs Yates. This taxi's cost me a fortune ticking away, eh? You don't do anything I wouldn't do, Eddie. Hey, take a note to him, love. There's not much he can do. Ta-da! Have a lovely time. Bye. Bye. Look, uh, we're not going out to Ringway. There'll be a good tip in it, though. I'm sorry to look you about, but if you just drive round the park for a bit, I'll tell you where we're going then. Good old Elsie, she's left the door open. I can't see anything, Eddie. Well, get hold of my hand. But it is our wedding night. Hey, should we go straight to bed? Yeah. <laughs> hey, surprise, surprise! Oh, what the flaming hell! Blame me! Then you don't ask me how, but then you. 
you. Hey, you thought you were being dead crafty, didn't you, eh? But I sussed you out. Gosh, what are you missing, right? I was fishing me flaming wedding night. Hey, have a drink, Mucker. He doesn't want one. But it's only a matter of ten minutes on the tosh already. <laughs> no, it's not. You come in, devils. Cracking on you, flying off to Benny Dorm. Well, we are in the morning. What about tonight? Yeah, well, come on. Give us your cases, you love birds. Come on, oh, drive past. Come on, the night is yours. Come on. I was going to say something about you. It's such a nice Don't be long in there. <laughs> Flipping marvellous. Well, I'm not getting into bed with all that lot next door. Oh, I don't blame you, love. What am I sitting on? Oh, Jack Duckworth and that Johnny Webber messing about in here with a bed. What the hell did you bring him round here for, Alice? Don't blame me. I couldn't stop him. Have you tried stopping that lot once they've got the taste? It's just a game to them, you know. But it's not to us, Elsie. All right, love. Look, I tell you what. As soon as I saw what was happening, and it's next door to Al's, and I used the telephone, I booked in at the Majestic Hotel on Bridge Street. Oh, great, Els. The only thing is, how do we get round there without Latlock following I us? I also used the telephone to phone a taxi. He should be waiting at the end of the road in about five minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Buzz off! The only trouble is, you've got to get out of here without them spotting you, so I'll go back and cause a distraction. Oh, buck up, love. The best of honeymoons always start with a disaster. See ya and good luck. at it then. Bloody heck, Betty. You don't have to creep up on me like that, you know. I work here, remember? Well, not at this time, you don't. Well, I do this morning by raw command. She's still in bed, is she? I wouldn't know. I've lost six inches off my legs crept up down that flipping stairs. What's the matter with her? I mean, she didn't say on the phone. All she said was she'd had a bad night. Hey, you've not taken to walking in your sleep, have you, Freddy? Give over. No, she reckons some of them yobbos across the road have been keeping her awake. Who oh, have they? Well, I think there was a bit of a dust up, you know. Mm. It's just a few lads letting their hair down. Mm. Well, she can't expect to sleep at night and lie in bed all flipping day long, can she? Well, she'll be down them stairs pretty quick if we don't get moving. And you better go and shift that jalopy of yours. Huh? Well, the brewery will be here any minute, won't they? I do know what day it is. Really? Things are looking up. <laughs> hey, what? I'll skin that flipping Mike Baldwin and his disco. Look at that. What is it, Fred? What is it? It's my flipping aerial, that's it. My car aerial, that's what it is. It is supposed to be on your car? Of course it's supposed to be on my car. <clears throat> One of them yobbos will have pulled it off. Hey, I bet I pound to a pinch of muck. It's them yobbos that are keeping Mrs Walker awake. Mm. You just let like, get... Wait, wait till I see Baldwin and his oppo. Look at that. Oh, come on, Fred. Oh. It's probably just a few lads letting their hair down. I mean, we all like a, a little bit of a night out now and again, don't we? Eh? Go on, then. What's the damage? Seven pound forty-two. Are you sure Al's only gone down to town hall, not Bermuda? How do you think I'll go on with four now to be? Hey, listen, I'll get Al to drop that off for you if you like. At that price, I expect it to be delivered by Golden Coal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Hiya. Hello, love. Hello. Give us a couple of bottles of stout, will you, please? Done off balm cakes over there, have you? Oh, good thinking. You can make yourself useful while you're here. I've got it ready. What? Balm cake order. Oh, no. I'm not going in this morning. Hurry up with them bottles of stout, will you, love? What's your excuse this time? Christmas shopping? Time off for good behaviour? I, I just didn't feel like it, that's all. Nothing wrong, is there? Oh, well, I, I didn't sleep very well last night and uh, I had a bit of trouble on the way home. What trouble? Oh, it was summer to now, but it seemed like summer at the time. What happened? 
Oh, well, I got roughed up, didn't I? Roughed up? Yeah. I'd, I'd been to the pictures with Peggy Kennedy, you know, out of packing. Yeah. Went to her house for a cup of coffee, and I'm just on my way, way home, and then there's these three fellas. They attack you? Well, not like that, but they... Well, they blocked me away, and they, they, they pushed me about a bit, and they, and they tried to maul me. And, I mean, really, they were too drunk to stand up, let alone out else, but... Well, it just shut me up a bit at the time, that's all. Where did all this happen? It was around the corner. I was coming home down Rosamond Street. Now, I reckon they must have come out of the discotheque because it was midnight, it was gone midnight, and it was far too late for the pub. Did you recognise any of them? No. If I ever see them again, they better watch out. Mm. Right, love, I'll see you. Yeah, listen, you take care. Yes, love, I will. Do it. Oh, oh well, you think what might have happened? Well, that was bad enough, weren't it? I mean, just supposing it'd been a little old lady with a weak heart. Oh, hello. Oh, sorry to bother you, Mrs. Bishop. You haven't got a plaster handy, have you? I've snagged me thumb. Oh, you better come in. There's something to keep the dirt out, you know. Yes, well... Oh, it doesn't look too bad. How did you do it? On a broken bottle, I reckon. Anyway, I didn't stop to find out. I just dropped the sack. Oh, dear. I'm afraid I might be to blame for that. I broke a jam jar yesterday. Yeah, well, if you do it again, wrap it up in newspaper or something, will you? It's one of the problems with these plastic sacks. Yes, of course. Do you know, I never thought. <laughs> well, a lot of folk don't. Well, if you could get us that plaster, then. Well, I'd feel happier if you'd let me clean it up a bit first. OK. <laughs> Well, I've not long since brewed a pot of tea. Would you like a cup while I have a look at your thumb? Now you're talking. I'll get the disinfectant. Oh, milk and sugar will do fine for me, love. <laughs> to put on your thumb. <laughs> Tom. Hey. What's it? We're laughing, Bob. Breakfast. Yes. You just have to make a vodka and tonic and you give it me. Just like that. No boring holes in my chest. No trying to lure me in the back of his car. Well, he's not quite himself, isn't Freddy Features. He had a very nasty shot this morning. Isn't that right, Chuck? All right, then. Chuck can laugh. It's now to laugh at Fred. Very nasty it were. He had his thingies snapped off in the middle of the night. Eh? Ariel, off his car. Mind you, he could only get one station any road, and only then when the wind were blowing in the right direction. That's now to do with it. It's vandalism, isn't it? Just wait till I see that Mike Baldwin. Mike Baldwin? What's he got to do with it? Because it's one of his disco hooligans that busted it off, innit? And somebody over there's going to pay for it, not Joe Muggins here, I'll tell you. Fred, Hello. that's a love. What, for me? Yeah, second post. Mrs Walker's only just got round for looking at it, love. Oh. Everything all right, love? Yeah. Yeah. Why shouldn't it be? Yes, Ken. Uh, just a half, please, bet. One half coming up. Fancy a pint to soak it up, love? Uh, no thanks. Not just now. Gravy's a lovely colour. Yeah, well, just a half will be fine. Thank you. <laughs> yes, love. Oh, give us a scotch, will you? Right. You having one? No, Tar. Nearly time I wasn't here any room. And me. I've got enough paperwork over there to cover the whole of Market Street, but if I don't get out just for five minutes, I'm going to go round the bend. Not one of your better days, I take it. You take it right. That lot over there have been jabbering away like a cave full of monkeys ever since they came in. All right, so Emily's taken a few days off that were due to her, but there are some certain members of my staff who think it's a waste of time going to work. They've got something better to do. Oh, you wouldn't by any chance be mean and Elsie, would you? As a matter of fact, I would. She knows I've got this big order to get out by the weekend. Do you know what she did? I'll tell you. She phones in. Says so she doesn't feel up to coming in. Wouldn't even tell me why. So you don't know why she doesn't feel up to it? Oh, she'll have some excuse. I mean, she's had all morning to think of one, hasn't she? She doesn't feel up to it because she was roughed up last night by three louts going home from your club. Who well, else she was? Right. Did she get hurt? Well, no, fortunately. I mean, they were too drunk to do much harm. <laughs> Wasn't very nice for her, though, was it? So if you're looking for somebody to blame, you don't have to look very far, do you? Well, if they came out the disco, why didn't she have a word with Watkins? Well, they weren't actually coming out of the disco. It was halfway down Rosamond Street when it happened. Oh, well, in that case, they could have come from anywhere, couldn't they? What? Gone midnight? Come on. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I mean, I feel very sorry for Elsie, but, I mean, if she doesn't know for certain that they came from the disco, well, that sort of talk could be very... Well, it could be very damaging. Oh, well, for your information, it didn't do her much good either, you know. Here, here. If this is a meeting of the Mike Baldwin fan club, I know somebody else who's been dying to meet you. Fred, a friend to see you. Oh, what does he want? Your guts are to guess, love. Uh, oh, it's you. 
Yeah, Bet said you wanted to see me. Yeah, and if you want to know why, just step outside and have a look at my car, mate. Mm. Your car? Yeah. My car had an aerial till one of your disco hooligans went and ripped it off. Oh, not you as well. Am I going to get it in the neck every time something happens around here after midnight, then? Oh, and if I had this bother till you opened that flaming place, did we? Oh, is that right? Well, let me tell you something. If you have certain proof that someone from the disco caused that damage, I'll look into it. But if not, I'd be very careful what you say if I was you. Very careful. What about my aerial? Well, he had face swine. Hmm. He uh, doesn't seem to be the most popular person around here just now. He's about as popular as Two Fake, can him? Never in a disco. <laughs> a brass neck of the fatty just didn't want to know. Oh, perhaps I can help. You? Uh, assuming, of course, there is some substance to your complaint. Substance? Just go outside and have a look at my car, can you? Well, Mrs. Walker, why she's yeah, not in bed. Yeah, okay, well, in that case, I think I can help. Oh, how? By doing a piece in the recorder, pointing out that the graffiti club hasn't exactly turned out to be the promised land, at least. Not as far as folk around here are concerned. He'd take notice then, wouldn't he? That'd take the smile off his face. Hey, Ken, you're a pal. So you'll give me some quotes I can use? Quotes? I'll give you enough quotes to fill that recorder twice over. Make a good cup of tea. Oh, thank you. How's the thumb? Oh, it's not dropped off yet. Oh, I hope it isn't going to. Well, tired anyway. You were lucky, you know. Lucky? What's unlucky then, losing an arm or a leg? Lucky to catch me in. Another five minutes and I'd have been on the way to the library. Well, if it's just something you're dropping off, I could do it for you. I've got to go myself this after. Oh, thank you, but uh, I want to change them, actually. Yeah, OK. What do you reckon to it, then? Uh, what's that? The new library. Oh, uh, oh, I like it. Much brighter than the old place. Easy to find things and all. Well, it is in non-fiction anyway. Do you use it a lot, then? Oh, I practically live there in the winter. Really? Well, don't sound so surprised. Just because I'm a bin man doesn't mean I can't read, you know. I have got two A-levels. I'm not the only one and all. There's one or two of the lads who've got it up here. But if you've got two A-levels... Why am I on the bins? Well, yes, I... I thought you might have found something more suitable than that. You sound just like my mum. Always going on at me, she was. Her and me old fella. Waste of a good education, they said. That's why I moved out in the end. I just couldn't stick it anymore. And the fact is, I quite like it on the bins. I mean, the money's OK. I've got some good mates. And I get a lot of time to myself. But my mum and dad, they couldn't see it my way. Couldn't see it my way at all. So, you're in lodgings, are you? Yeah. Oh, you don't sound too keen. Well, it'd be all right if the lads I share with were more on my wavelength. You see, I like to get my head stuck into a good book or take a squint through my telescope. Telescope? Astronomy. That's what I'm into at the moment. They think I'm round the twist. I mean, if you're not gawping at the telly or swilling ale or birding it, they reckon you're not normal. But at least the company, I suppose. And it's nice to know there's someone there if you want a chat, you know. So, uh, that's something I couldn't stick that, you know, being on my own. I don't know how you stick it on you, Todd. Honest, I don't. Oh, some of us don't have much choice, I'm afraid. You wouldn't be trying to tell us something, would you, Albert? I don't much good to tell why I'm so many drunks about these days. Time it takes to get served. I've only got one pair of hands, haven't I? So what's up with him? Is he too far from the walk over here? Look. Do you want serving or not? Because it might help if you give us a clue what you want. Well, I wouldn't mind a drop of rum. One rum coming up. But I can't afford it. Try my half a mile. Certainly, Albert. Anything you say, Albert. I think it's nice to see people happy at the work. Oh, I am, Albert. And shall I tell you what makes me so happy? Oh. It's seeing all these happy little smiling faces on the other side of the bar all day. But what can you do about it? Oh, folk do take some notice of the recording, you know. Yeah, especially those at the town hall. Yeah, all right, point taken. But Baldwin's right, though, isn't he, love? I mean, you haven't got anything to go on. Don't get me wrong, I feel sorry for Elsie and for Fred and all, but... 
Well, they could have come from anywhere. You don't know they came from the graffiti. Yeah, I know all about that, though, but the facts are that Fred's car was damaged, Elsie was harassed in the streets, and there have been other incidents, all within very close proximity to the graffiti club, and nearly all since it opened. So all I intend to do is set out the facts and let other people draw their conclusions. With a little shove in the right direction from you. Well, perhaps just a little one, mm, yes. Well, just you be careful. And remember there's such a thing as libel. You're not suggesting I shouldn't do it? No, of course not. Listen, love, if you think what you're doing's right, I'm with you all the way. Good girl. Ah, go on, Fred. If you laugh anymore, you split your pants. Now what are you on about? What's to do? You've got to face it to stop a town hall clock. Oh, sorry, Betty. I'll pop down the market get another one. Hey, someone's up in there. It was that letter, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I suppose I'll get an old piece if I don't tell you, will I? It was from Eunice's solicitor. Eunice's solicitor? She wants a divorce. Oh, Fred. I'm sorry, lovely. Sorry? Shouldn't be. I'm not. Are you not? No. There was no marriage, was there, really? It was all over. It was just like um, a big black cloud hanging over me. It was just like I got rid of a big millstone round my neck. Yeah. No, I'm a free agent now. Well, look out, world. Here I come, eh? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes, pal. I don't know why you've not thought of it before. Well, to be honest, the thought had crossed my mind, but taking in a lodge would be quite a big step for me. I mean, well, these days you can't be too sure who you're taking in. Well, that's why I reckon you'd be best off with a student. At least you'd have someone with a brain for company, not some empty-headed moron who only opens his mouth to stuff it with fodder. <laughs> yes, I suppose so. I reckon you got on great with a student. Well, ta for the tea. I must be going. Oh, and thanks for looking after this. Oh, it was nothing. I I'm only sorry it happened in the first place. Yeah, well, think on what I said. I reckon the Polly would snap your hand off if you decided to take on a student. Well, see ya. Yes, and, and thank you. All quiet, Sally? Yeah, just a couple of phone calls, Mr Barlow. Anything important? Well, nothing I couldn't handle. Good girl. Right, well, if any calls come in for me in the next hour, I'm not in. Are you going out again? Nope. I just don't want to be disturbed for a while. You working on a story, are you? Uh, that's right. A big one? Uh, no, I won't call it big exactly, but uh, just something I need to think about, you know. I know what I want to say, but I've got to be careful how I say it. Yeah, Miss Mitchell was good at that. Uh, yes, I know. Secret, is it? Uh, no, no, not really. I'm uh, doing a piece on the graffiti club. Oh, what's about it? Well, there have been a number of complaints, you know, noise, damage to cars, drunks making a nuisance of themselves, that sort of thing. Yeah, but do you think you should? But they advertise with us, don't they? Yes, I know they do, but they also seem to be making a great number of people's lives a misery as well. Well, Miss Mitchell wouldn't do anything like that. No, when they advertise with us, she wouldn't. Not without talking to Mr. Statham first. Miss Mitchell isn't running this paper anymore, Sally. I am. Right, I'm off. Oh, looking for some, innit? Hey, cheeky devil. I've been here since half past nine this morning. All oh, right. What do you want, a medal? I'll lock oh, up after you, Betty. lovely, eh? <laughs> I'll see you later, lovely. <laughs> If you don't mind me saying so, Fred, for a fellow who's supposed to be chucked a little mint balls because he's about to become a free agent again, you've got a very funny way of showing it. Well, have you heard about that? Oh, I know. Mighty Mal. No, it weren't like that, Fred. She only told me so I won't go putting my size tens in it, didn't she? Oh, aye. Well, some fellas can be very sensitive about that sort of thing. Well, I'm not some fellas, am I? The sooner I get her off my back, the better I can start living again. Who are you trying to kid, Fred? I'm not kidding. I'm just facing facts. Oh, aye. That's why you've had a face as long as Rosamond Street all after, is it? Look, it doesn't matter what you say, Betta. I should never have married her in the first place. But, I mean, you were right enough at the start. Didn't work out, did it? It was what they call a Fred G spectacular. You know, like the touch paper and pst, nothing happens. Oh, that's what's up with you then. <laughs> well, you must admit, I'm 
sort of getting good at it, Anna. You know, getting things wrapped up and then all turns to out. But I mean, it weren't like that with Eunice, were it? It weren't your fault. Well, not all of it. Well, me the picture, weren't it? No, I bet you're looking at one of life's failures. Look at me, I'm the original. Bye, heck, Fred. Do us a favour, will you? You're not even in the same league as me. I'm world flaming champion, aren't I? You and me both, I bet. Doesn't make it any easier, though, does it? Well, no. Doesn't make it any easier at the time, but we do have something going for us. All right. Well, we know we'll come bouncing back, don't we? We always do. Let's face it, we've had enough practice. We're survivors, you and me, Fred. World wouldn't go round without our sort. It's all of a kind, eh? Definitely. Look, I'll tell you what, what about going for a bit of a spin in the car, you know? Go for a drink down our sorrows, don't uh, I mean? I see. You're at it again already. Well, you'll come? Love to. Oh, great. Only trouble is, I'm having me hair done, aren't I? No flipping changes, does it? What have I been trying to tell you, Freddy? Uh, yeah, thanks, Ellie. How's it going, then? Uh, it's coming along. Can I read it? Well, uh, I think I'd like to finish it first. Yeah, but I might be able to help. Go on. He's tidying up a bit yet, my dear. The Graffiti Club in Rosamond Street. Heralded by local businessman and co-owner Mike Baldwin as the goose that would lay the proverbial golden egg as far as the local entertainment scene is concerned, appears to have turned into something of an albatross around the necks of many local residents. Inside the club, the scene may be one of glitter and glamour, but on the other side of the front door, it appears to be a very different story. For many neighbouring residents, the club has brought nothing but misery since it opened, in the shape of sleepless nights, damage to parked cars, and there's even been a complaint by one female resident of being manhandled by late-night revellers. You're not thinking of printing this? No, not thinking, Sally. I'm going to. Everything I've written here happens to be true and I got all the quotes I need to stand it out. These aren't my views, you know. These are the views of our readers. Readers who happen to have an axe to grind and can't find any other way of making themselves heard. And I happen to think that's what we're here for. Did you sell the last of the fish fingers? Uh, yeah, Mrs. Amphlett had the last packet. Oh, blimey, don't they eat anything else in their house? They'd be growing flippers. Now you come to mention it, she was walking funny. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, heck, yeah, Emily. You're making the most of your day off. What have you forgotten this time? Oh, would you believe strawberry jelly? I believe anything, love. Just the one. Uh, no, better make it two, and then I'll have one in. Right. I think I'll put a couple of these away for myself. Tracy's bringing Natalie on for a tea. Do you know, she'd live on strawberry jelly, that one, if she had the chance. <laughs> I thought it was you disappearing through the door. Only saw you from back mine, but I were right, weren't I? Oh, I thought it were faces you had a good memory oh. for. <laughs> How's toaster, then? Oh, uh, fine, I think. Uh, I haven't used it yet. Oh, started selling toasters, have you? It's a going cheap. No, he hasn't sold me anything. Mr Subden fitted a new plug for me. Oh, I see. A bit of a handyman, are you, then? I'm more than that, Councillor. I can turn my hand to anything I can. Anything. Looks as if you've got yourself a right little treasure there, Emily. Well, I've told her. If there's anything she ever wants, she's only got to ask. I mean, I know how difficult it can be for a woman on her own. Isn't that right, love? So I'm beginning to discover. Stop. Oh, Mr Baldwin. Oh, I'm not interrupting anything, am I? No, no, of course not. Well, cheer up, then. I've just brought you Christmas bonus. Oh? Yeah. I've just come back from a meeting with Yardy about our advertising and uh, we decided that if we want to grab our first share of the Christmas trade, we'd better start shouting a bit louder than we have been doing recently. So uh, we've decided to take some extra full pages in the recorder. As well as your usual advertising. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we thought we'd kick off with uh, one in the next issue, one, perhaps two in the issue after that, you know, leading up to the Christmas party bit. Why? No problems, is there? None that I can see, Sally. No. None at all. Oh, good. Well, look, uh, there's a copy in there of uh, what we'd like it to look like, uh, so I'll leave it with you. Oh, uh, there is one thing, though, uh, the little piece that goes with it. What little piece is that, then? The blurb, giving us a boost. You do it for all your big advertisers. I was going to bring you some words that I'd written, but uh, I thought you'd probably make a much better job of it than me, so uh, I leave it in your capable hands, just so long as it brings the punters in. But uh, don't lay it on too thick, will you? 
We do want them to believe it, don't we? See you. As I ever talked to you, Miss Myself, she always seemed to be a bit, you know, false. But I must say, I'm sorry the way it's all turned out. Mm -hmm. But you know, when I see him going out mm -hmm. on his night off, all dressed up and reeking of aftershave mm -hmm. and looking so optimistic. And hoping to meet somebody. And you know, Betty, he never does. Well, it's okay. I haven't got a disease. I want to get a divorce. I mean, thousands do it. Oh, Fred. Well, I know you're talking about me. There's no need to clam up as soon as I come in. Oh, we were saying that it was hard luck for you, Fred. That's all. Yeah, well, that's the way it goes, isn't it? Any road, I'm going out to her solicitors this afternoon. Is tying up a few loose ends, you know. Well, you want to be careful, Carl. Careful? What of? Her grabbing me millions? <laughs> I'll give over. And none there. I've got nothing. Me flaming nout. I'll tell you what, Freddie Kins. You play your cards right, and you can take me out to the graffiti club after we finish work. It'll be a right novelty for me, you know. I've almost forgotten what it's like to go out with an unmarried man. <laughs> well, I'm not an unmarried man yet, am I? Well, it's all over by the shouting. Any road, I'm not going across there to them idiots what, after what they did to my car. Ooh. Well, all right, the Las Vegas club, then, or the Golden Suspender. Anywhere, you know me, I'm not fussy as long as it's expensive. And Betty will come too, won't you, love? I'll lend you my sequin yeah. boot. Hey, hang on a minute. <laughs> I'm not taking you two out again after what happened last time. Ah, but they've not got a lake at the Las Vegas, have they? <laughs> Just a very small fish tank in the foyer. <laughs> and I doubt whether even you could drive your motor into that. <laughs> hey, I don't know what I'm laughing at. Just getting rid of one woman, I've still lumbered with three, aren't I? I know. Some men have all the luck, don't they? <sighs> got you as Ellen girl this morning, have they? Aye, well, we must all take his turn, you know. You all right? Oh, wonderful. Oh, I don't know, love. When I think of the life you've had, the chances you've had, the chances you could still have. You're still a very fine-looking woman, you know. Are you flirting with me, Mr Roberts? Of course I'm not. Oh, pity. I could have done with the morale boosting. Oh. Shall I go out and come in again? Don't be daft. No. I'm just saying to Elsie, though, she shouldn't be working in that factory, you know. Running errands for bits of kids half her age. No, and we shouldn't be stuck behind shop counters all day, neither. We should all three be on a yacht, sipping long, cool drinks oh. in the bikinis. Well, don't just stand there, Elf. You're the fella going to organise. Oh, right. Phone for you, love. It's uh, Turner and Green about that oh, invoice. Oh, right. Here, deal with that, will you, love? Oh, right. What were all there, then? Oh, I thought I looked a bit down in the dumps. Well, you do. You're not still worried about them three fellas till the night, are you? Oh, no. I'm over it now. Shook me up a bit at the time, though, mm. and it makes you think. Makes you look at yourself. I said to myself, I'll see. What are you doing? You're going out on your own. You're coming home on your own. Happened to me once. When? when? Oh, it, it was a long time ago. A fella, um, well, I managed to get away before he could do any real harm. It, it was when I was married to Ray. The thing is, I know what it feels like. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You did have Ray to come home to. Me, I go out on my own, come home on my own, go upstairs on my own, go to bed on my own, or wake up on my own. Mm. See, I don't think Alpha's far off the mark when you think of it. Chances are bad. Morning, ladies. Lola. All right, now, Elsie. I'll survive. Of course you will. You always do. Give us a packet of my cigars, will you, love? No. Don't mind me jumping the queue, do you, darling? Well, feel free. We're used to being trod on. <laughs> I can't think of any two women in the country, with a possible exception of Maggie T, who are less likely to get trodden on than you two. You three. Just stop to see your old man, as a matter of fact. I put some advertising this way. Did he tell you? He doesn't mention every little detail of his day. Little detail? You see, that's what I am. Good job I take everything in my stride, innit? See ya. Reaction ran so high that a public meeting was held, which left anyone who attended it in little doubt of the very real strength of public opinion. In spite of this, the council subsequently granted planning permission for the proposed disco. It was widely felt that... widely felt, widely felt. I think that's a bit timid. It's a bit colourless. How about cutting right across public opinion the council gave a go-ahead to a project with etc et yeah et cetera, et cetera. okay right keep that in which in the light of recent events has proved those who opposed it to have been absolutely right 100 percent right no absolutely right uh, mr barlow are you sure you want to do this well you know the problem that's causing and will continue to cause yes i know it's a crusade and, and crusading is all good stuff but it's just that I think there are other things that go on around here, much worse things to get steamed up about, like muggings and vandalism. Old people getting ripped off. 
Like that old woman in Maudsley Street, don't you remember? Who had all her savings conned out of her by a man who said he'd come to fix the roof. Apart from anything else, con men and muggers don't on the whole advertise with us, do they? It's not either or, Sally. We do that as well. And I take your point about the money. Hi. Oh. Hard at it. That's the idea. Where are the uh, green eye shades? Huh? Um, cup of coffee, Mr. Baldwin. No, thank you, sweetheart. I'll take a rain checker on that and I'll bit push this morning. I just wonder what you thought of that stuff I dropped off yesterday. I'm uh, sorry. We're not going to be able to take it. No. No space, eh? Well, that's all right. Start it uh, next week, but no later. I mean, that'll still give us plenty of time for the Christmas party. No, I mean that in future we can't take any advertising for the graffiti club. It's against editorial policy. What editorial policy? Well, it's quite simple. There have been a lot of complaints. What, Fred? Gee, you don't believe that big baboon, do you? Elsie Tanner? That wasn't exactly a very pleasant experience for any woman to have to undergo. Elsie has got no proof those blokes came from our club. They could have come from anywhere. Anyway, she's all right. I've just seen her. So on the strength of that, you're turning down hundreds of quids worth of business. Hundreds of quids worth? Yeah. This is the first of a series. Full page jobs. I don't care if you buy up every bit of space in the paper. We happen to think that the graffiti club is a public nuisance against public interest. And it's our job to say so loud and clear. We? Let's not kid ourselves. It's you, isn't it, chum? Yeah, OK. I mean me. As editor, it's my decision and I've made it. So, obviously, we can't do business. I'm sorry. Sorry. You're laughing your little socks off and we all know why, don't we? I think I've made myself perfectly clear, so there's really no point in prolonging this discussion. Well, obviously not with you. But I wonder if your co-director would take such a high-handed attitude when he realises how much lolly that this tin pot little business is going to lose. disturbing you, Mrs. Bishop, only I know it's dinner time, but I did knock on earlier, but you were out. Oh, I was at work. Oh. No, come on in. <laughs> I was just uh, catching up on the ironing, as a matter of fact. If, if I leave it till the evening, I never feel like doing it. Yeah, my mum says the same thing. At the end of the day, she likes to put her feet up and watch the telly with a bag of caramels. <laughs> How's the hand? Oh, that's fine, Tar. Would you like a cup of tea? I was just oh, going no, to... No, no, uh, thanks all the same. I can't stop long. Um, the thing is, about that ad you put in the poly, I'd wondered if you'd done it yet. Well, I was going to have a try at writing a card out this evening, as a matter of fact, but, um, well, it's a question of finding the right wording. I mean, I do rather like the idea of a young person, but, well... To be honest, I, I wouldn't want someone who played the bongo drums or burnt jostics, you know, that sort of thing. Just a nice, quiet, normal sort of young person would do. <laughs> if there are any these days. I'm normal. I never played a bongo or burnt a jostic in my life. So what I was wondering, like, is would I do? Uh, as my lodger? Well, as I said, I don't get on that well with the lads where I am and... I'd be right pleased to move in if you'd have me. And I do study astronomy, which is a fairly quiet hobby on the whole, unless I make contact with E.T. E.T.? Extraterrestrial. You must have seen the film. Oh, yes, of course. Well, no, I, I didn't, actually. You never. You missed a treat. Well, that sort of thing isn't really my cup of tea. Star Wars? Return of the Jedi? Close encounters of the third kind. I mean, they're not just for kids, you know. I mean, apart from the, the technical brilliance, they're a sort of total experience. I tell you what, next time they come round, we'll go together. You'll enjoy it, I promise it'll be great. I'll educate you into a whole new world. Oh, but you've not said about me coming here yet. Are you willing to take me on? Well, it, uh, it looks like I'll have to, doesn't it? If I'm going to complete my education. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, all right, love. Um, I've got to go now. OK? Yeah. See you tonight, then. Bad day. Yeah, don't be late. Hi. Boyfriend. Oh, one of them. Oh. <laughs> Enjoy your lunch. Oh, fabulous. It seems to be something very sinful about going out for lunch in the middle of the week, even if it is only with your husband. <laughs> uh, shall I make you a cup of tea, then? No, not for me, Tar, love. I've got to get back. God, you've been flipping Cinderella got till midnight. Are these all the messages? Yeah. Um, there's only one important one. Mr Baldwin rang to speak to Mr Statham. Oh, yeah? What did you say? The truth. He's not been in today and I don't know when he will be. Mm. That won't put him off. Oh, uh, yeah, Deirdre knows all about our little dilemma. In fact, we've been discussing it over lunch. I'd hardly call it a little dilemma. Well, it's not unheard of, you know. I'm quite sure national newspapers quite often refuse advertising, especially if it's for something they think will offend their readers. Maybe they can afford to be choosy. Anyway, people pay to buy them. Still, I've said my say. You've made your decision. Now, I'd better get back before Alf thinks I've got yeah. lost. I'll right, see bye you bye later. Bye. bye, love. Bye, Sally. Nice to meet you. Ta-da. Bye. Uh, right, so what have we got then? <clears throat> Christmas panto at St Winifred's. Do you fancy Mother Goose at St Winifred's? <laughs> or would you rather do a scintillating interview with Gladys Snell, who has the oldest parrot in Weatherfield? I'm not sure who you'd interview, mine, Gladys Snell or the parrot. You know, one day, when I'm the second Linda Lee Potter queening it in Fleet Street, I'll remember all this, you know. Oh, so that's where your aspirations lie. Well, don't intend to be stuck in Weatherfield all my life. No. I seem to remember saying the same thing myself once. Weatherfield recorder. Oh, hello, Mr. Statham. Yeah. Yeah, he's in. Do you want to speak? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, OK. I'll tell him. Bye. He said he'll be in between half five and six, and would you wait? He'd like to see you. Did he say why? No, he seemed pretty steamed up about something. You don't think Mr Baldwin's managed to track him down, do you? Oh, very likely. Yes, Deirdre's right. He's not the type to give up easily. But your future Majesty of Fleet Street, nor am I. Weather good? Grub good? Vino mucho cheapo? Married life fantastic? Love, Mr and Mrs Eddie Yates. Uh, I'm glad they're enjoying themselves. Yeah. Hey, do you remember that time we all went off to Mallorca and you got off with that flamenco oh. dance? Where's this? I never heard about this. I didn't get off with him, I just danced the nifty flamenco, that's all. He had a lovely pair of castanets, though. Oh, what about her? Missing playing home and staying on with that con man who said he was a property developer. What? Oh, that was your real holiday romance, that's. I was madly, passionately and pulsatingly in love. What recall? He I forget. Oh, he often joke. Yeah, I don't want to be late. Well, no. We'll manage all right, lovey. Hope everything goes all right for you, love. Yeah. As long as she doesn't start coming one of her tantrums. I don't see why she should. With Eunice's idea to get this divorce. Yeah, well, you never know with Eunice, do you? No. You never know what game she's coming. Mm. I remember she told me some story about the fellow she ran off with and it turned out to be somewhat completely different. Mm. Well, telling the truth wasn't one of Eunice's strong points, Betty. Well, you'll feel better once it's over and done with, lovely. Yeah. Go on. I don't know. If I'd just had a nice midday treat, I'd not be standing here looking as if my feelings were dropping out. Sorry, Alf, I was just thinking. Oh, don't apologise. I'm not complaining. It's just that I like your face either way, you know. But it's a very bonny face, but it suits a smile better than a frown. I'll tell you what. Next half-day closing, I'll take you out for lunch. Joe's we'll that. We'll talk. <laughs> Good. Do you know, I think that's the first time ever in my life that a bonny lass has ever asked me out. You'd better make the most of it, then. Of course, I shall. Don't worry. I'll tell you someone else and all. I think I like this equality lot. <laughs> Deirdre, can I have a word with you in private? Well, uh... Yeah, it's all right. I've got to uh, see about mm. that invoice. Do you know, they haven't sorted it out yet. Yeah? You've got to have a word with that old man of yours. Have I? What about? I always thought you know perfectly well what about. This stupid vendetta is carrying on. Vendetta? Well, what else would you call it? First of all, he refuses to take the graffiti's advertising, and now he's writing a piece knocking the place. Well, presumably, he thinks it's just. Now, look, don't you give me all that uh, in the interest of the public garbage. We all know why he's doing it, don't we? Do we? Now, you just tell him it's stupid, it's silly, and it's, it's bad business sense. You tell him that. Well, I think you've got a flaming nerve assuming that Ken had let personal considerations affect the way he runs that paper. It's got nothing to do with with what happened. No? Well, I admire your loyalty, but I look at it in a different way than well, you. Well, that's up to you, isn't it? So are you going to talk any sense into him or not? I'm not going to interfere, if that's what you mean. The way he runs that paper is his business. Even if he runs it into the ground, which is what he's going to do, this, as sure as eggs are eggs, the way he's going... Look, it's sweet of you to be so concerned, but if that happens, that's our problem. Oh, I'll... Uh... It's all right, Alf. 
Mike was just going. Look, I, uh, I don't like a fight, Deirdre. Nobody in their right mind does. And I was hoping, with your help, that we could have settled this in a much more friendly way. But uh, if Ken's determined to slug it out and you're obviously not prepared to stop him, then, well, sweetheart, you know what they say about the best man. Don't some people just make me want to hate him? Oh, you're back. How does it go, Cock? I put the kettle on for and make you a nice cup of tea. No, I won't have tea, Betty. Thanks. I'll uh, have something stronger. Oh. Anybody else? No. Get out. <laughs> it's a funny thing. Probably the last time I've seen you, Miss. <laughs> she hasn't changed much. Hair's done a little bit different. Mm. Otherwise, she's well, just about the same, really. A fine-looking woman, I'll say that for her. Uh, probably a bit too glamorous for me. That's been the trouble, hasn't it? Hey, now, give over, Fred. It's not like you to put yourself down. That's usually my job. Yeah, well, knocks chunks off your job like this, you know. Now it's the dinner pots. Dinner pots? Mm. Pots and pans, bits and bobs of furniture, little colour tally, things like that, you know. Oh, what about them? Well, she wants them back, doesn't she? Last pound of flesh. You're not let her. Oh, well, she said she wanted them. She's getting married again. Needs them to set up home. Flaming cheek. Anyway, I said that I'd like that little colour tally. She can have the rest. A flaming lot, take it. Oh, now, come on, Fred. Don't be bitter. It ain't worth it, love Oh, not bitter, Betty. It's, it's life, innit? It's all gone and well, there's now to take its place. Oh, there will be. Of course there will. And in the meantime, look on the bright side. Bright side? Well, like you said this morning, you've still got me and Betty and Mrs Walker. So, light of my life, what more could you possibly want? Another stiff drink. There's rather a lot of books, I'm afraid. Well, that's all right. There's plenty of shelves up in your room. Why don't you go up and start unloading them and I'll make us some tea? Oh, I don't want to put you to any trouble. Oh, it isn't. I'm happy to do it. Do you have any special likes or dislikes in the way of food, by the way? Oh, no, I'm dead easy, me. I eat out. Me mum used to call me the human rubbish disposal. <laughs> she says, at least in that respect, I was qualified for me job. Oh, I'll, I'll get this lot upstairs, then. It's a belting little room, by the way. I'm going to be right snug up there. Thanks, Mrs Bishop. Right, you've got three guesses. What have I got under here? A steam engine, an elephant, Mr Tatlock's cap. Well, yeah, you're perky this afternoon. I am feeling rather cheerful, as it happens. Oh, you feel a lot better when you've had a taste of these. Homemade potato mm. cakes. And I'll tell you, the lads in my platoon you to say, Percy, if there was any justice, they'd give you the military medal just for your potato cakes. They certainly smell good. Right, now then, where do you keep your butter? Because you have to have them well, they're still hot, and drip with butter. And I don't want no nonsense about calories and cholesterol. Any road, you could do it fattening up a bit. I <laughs> could not. Any road, I just finished them, and I thought to myself, I bet Mrs Bishop's never tasted out the like of these. No, and it seemed daft having them all on me, Todd. I like sharing. Things are better when they're shared, don't you think? Definitely. <clears throat> Is it all right if I use that polished table to put my telescope on? Only I have a felt pad and it won't scratch it. Oh, yes, of course. Don't worry about it. The girl is just moving in, Mr Sugden. He's going to be my new lodger. Do you know anything about astronomy, Mr Sugden, or outer space? I've promised to teach Mrs Bishop about the vast mysteries of the galaxy. Have you just made them? They look smashing. You know what? I'm going to be right happy here. All right, Sally, you can pack up now. Uh, I've just got one more letter to do, Mrs. Staven. Is it urgent? No, not really. Then it'll keep till morning. Right then. Night, Mrs. Staven. Oh, yeah. Mr. Barlow. Sally. See you in the morning. Good girl. Yes. 
All right, what's all this nonsense about, then? Nonsense? Come on, Ken, you know what I'm on about. Baldwin. Oh, he's spoken to you, then? He rang me at all. In a state of high old agitation, I might add, I can't say he wasn't justified. You may be a bright lad, Kenneth, but you've a hell of a lot to learn. Oh, maybe, but uh, I am, correct me if I'm wrong, editor of this paper. I mean, that was our deal. It was. You are also, of course, a partner. A junior partner. Well, are you saying that every time it comes to the crunch, you're going to pull rank? Because that wasn't the way I said no, it. No, no, on the whole, I'm quite happy to leave the whole shooting match to you. I have other things to do. But not on this occasion. Kenneth, tell me. What do you think this business is all about? The newspaper business. Information, ideas, a public platform for promoting awareness, stimulating interest, that sort of thing. You left out something. Making money. Ah. Yes, well, I'm not totally unaware, but... Uh, what do you think we might be in danger of letting the tail wag the dog? As a free sheet, our advertisers are the tail, a very large tail. They're our only source of income. Never forget it, alienate them and we're done, finished. You can go back, cap it down to the council, see if they'll give you your old job back. Well, what do you want me to do? Tell Baldwin. It was all a misunderstanding. We're only too happy to take his ads. And then you can write your article. Write it? That's right. Say what a pleasant dive it is. How it's just the job for a bloke to take his girl or his wife for a Christmas booze up. How the prices are reasonable, the staff friendly, the service good. The ambience, intimate, stroke elegant, stroke funky, whatever the hell yeah. you, so you know. So that's it, is it? That is it. Ten, fifty, a hundred local residents can suffer loss of sleep, vandalism, harassment, heaven knows what from that place. And we as a paper have to keep our mouths shut because Baldwin is footing the bill. You don't have to lick his boots. But for the money he's spending, he's entitled to at least a pat on the back. Aye. I'm off. Leave it to it, then. I want to leave it. What? You see? Oh, it can't I'm not surprised. You've been staring into your cup that long. I was beginning to think you were going into fortune-telling business. Well, I wish I was. I might know which way to turn. If it is, I haven't a clue. Yeah, I know it's difficult, love, but uh, Stephen's right. You've got no choice. You're in business to make money. So I just knuckle under and write a glorious report saying how wonderful the graffiti club is. I don't see what else you can do. Yeah, but what about all those people who don't happen to think the graffiti club is a, a barrel of fun? What about all the Harry Walkers and the Fred G's and the Elsie Tanners? And all those other people are expecting me to play their cards for them because they don't have a voice loud enough to be heard. I know, it's a problem. Yes, I know, but it shouldn't be, should it? That is my point. I should be able to take up the cudgels on their behalf, whether it's against the council, graffiti club or King Dick himself. But if all anybody has to do to spike our guns is pay for an advertisement, well, what kind of a paper is that? Yeah, but he's not going to be like that, though, is he? Not all the time. You'll have plenty of opportunity to have your say. Pam Mitchell did, didn't she? It's just that there are times when you've got to think of the wider interests of the paper. Exactly, exactly. And I happen to think that the wider interests of the recorder are better served by acting as the voice and conscience of our readers. Look, love, I know how you feel, believe me. But if you go around turning down adverts like Mike Baldwin wants to buy, you're not going to have a newspaper to air your views in, are you? Ta-da. Do you want some of Fred? Oh, you needn't flatter yourself, Lynch. I'm only looking for somewhere to put these. Oh. Well, I hope you don't put them where your eyes just were. I could do myself a very nasty injury if I turn round quick. Henry Rod, I thought you said you were coming here first thing. Give us a hand. I have. But seeing as I work twice as fast as you, I thought I'd give you a head start, love. Tell you what, we must be soft in the flipping head. Oh, aye, you speak for yourself. Well, we must, mustn't we? Johnny has to snap a little fingers and we come running. It's all right. I know what the genie of the lamp felt like now. I'll tell you what, she's got us there. She has, I'm telling you. Folks like that. Oh, I know her type. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Walker. Oh. Mrs. Walker? Oh, it's you, Betty. Do you know, I really must get these new teeth fixed. Only at this distance, I could have sworn it was Mrs. Walker. Mm. 
Calm down, Fred. You're at a very funny age. Listen, I haven't got a clue what you're talking about, but I am not in the best of moods. Now, I'm warning you, I've had to wait 20 minutes for a bus. 20 minutes? And why we've got to be near the crack of dawn, that beats me and all. Well, it's because the decorators are coming this morning, aren't they? Well, I know that, but I didn't think they'd be here first thing. I thought you'd be this afternoon. But we don't know what time they're coming, do we? Not proper. That's why Mrs Walker said we'd have to be ready for them. Just what I was saying, innit? Eh? Well, we're mugs, aren't we? Look, if the brewery want to send decorators round here, they want to send somebody round here to get it ready for them, don't they? Well, they have, haven't they, Fred? Have they? You? Well, oh, thanks very much, ma'am. Oh, come on, Fred. If we're all mucking together, we'll soon get it done. Of course we will. We're a team, eh, Betty? Yes. And does that include Her Royal Highness yonder? Well, of course it does, Fred. It just so happens that this morning, Mrs Taylor Brown is coming up to town. And Mrs Walker can't possibly leave her to run right round the streets on a tod, now can she? Come on, cheer up, Fred. I mean, you've still got us. I'll go put the kettle on. Yes, and I'll come with you. I want to phone the hairdressers. Hey, hey. I thought you just said this were a team effort, this. Well, yes, it is. And what a team effort, Freddy. You can do it. Old brain must have up, has it? Bless her the old, if you don't mind. Can I help? I doubt it. I am going to be a reporter one day, you know. So you keep telling me. It's the graffiti club piece, is it? That's right. I'm still struggling. Struggling is the word. Why didn't you have a look in the back copies file? Very inspiring, they are. Yeah, but it's not inspiration I'm short of. So what's the problem? The problem is, I'm happier writing pieces based on fact than fiction. And this is going to be the greatest bit of fiction of all time, if I've got to say how wonderful the Graffiti Club is. Oh, morning, morning. Oh, good morning, Mr Statham. We weren't expecting to see you this morning. Oh, I was just passing. Thought I'd drop in and see if that Donaldson copy would arrived yet. Yeah, first thing this morning. And so the stuff you were waiting for from that new hardware shop in the precinct, I'm just retyping it. Oh, good lass. Could be a lucrative account, could that? Ten spots on the front page for starters. A couple of full pages for special promotions. Do with a few more like that. Oh, there was something else. The uh, graffiti club. How's your piece coming along? Slowly. But it's coming along. You'll get what you want. Good lad. I knew you'd come round to thinking it my way when you had time to give it some thought. I didn't say I'd think it your way. I said I'd do it. I'll look forward to reading it. Right, I'll give you a call later. Right, Mr. Statham. Don't let me keep you. Ooh, something smells good. Just boiling me socks. You what? It's a joke, love. It's his dinner. I hope he didn't mind me making a start, only my belly was rumbling like a concrete mixer. No, of course I don't mind. I told you you should have had a proper breakfast, didn't I? Well, get your coat off. It'll be on the table in a few minutes. You made something for me as well. Well, you're stopping, aren't you? Yes, of course, and thanks very much. But you shouldn't have bothered. It should be me who was cooking for you. It's no bother, honest. I enjoy mucking about in the kitchen. <laughs> well, get your coat off. You're in for a treat. Speciality of the house. Oh, whatever it is, it smells delicious. It is. Bacon and black pudding a la Curly Watts. Black pudding? You've never tasted black pudding like it. I get it off a bloke on the rounds. He's got his own slaughter house down by the canal. I'd eat black pudding till they come out my ears. My mum used to say you'd never touch them if you knew what was in them. <laughs> uh, did you say there was uh, bacon as well? There is. Get yourself sat down. You're very honoured, you are, you know. It's not everybody I share my black pudding with. <laughs> I mean, he seems a nice enough lad. Oh, I'm sure he is. I mean, she wouldn't go into anything with her eyes closed. Not Emily. So, uh, when are they delivering yours then, Maeve? My what? Roger the lodger. Let's face it, love, you've got a lot to offer a husky 18-year-old lad looking for a few home comforts. You have, you know. I don't think so. No, perhaps not. Oh, I like to think of my little flat as my own, I'm afraid. It's lovely to get in at night. Close that door. No, there's just the two of us. Two of you? Yes. Me and Harriet. 
Oh, you buddy, you mean. Oh, I would miss her if I didn't have her. I think she'd miss me as well. The minute I open that door, she puts her little head on one side. Really? Yeah. Actually, I feel guilty if I'm going out again, you know, to the pictures or somewhere. Having left her on her own all day, it doesn't seem fair somehow. No. Well, if you're that worried about it, love, I I'm sure Fred would be only too happy to oblige. He never was one to turn down the chance of keeping a bird company for a few hours, eh, kid? Bird? What, what bird? Oh, just your type, Chuck. Young, chirpy, bright-eyed, and what's more, speaks your kind of language. Oh, oh uh, who's this, then? Uh, uh, Harriet. Harriet? <laughs> Fudgy. <laughs> well, let's face it, Fred, it's best offer you've had today. <laughs> Got you by the ears now, Albert. Slim's not over yet. Well, all right, ten o'clock is gone. I'm knocking out now. Oh. Well, what did I tell you? You know, battle's never lost until it's won. As you'd have known if you'd been a Viking soldier, instead of a flipping crook. Well, go on, get him in. It's your turn. You lost, didn't you? I got him in last time. Oh, well, I'm going home if you want to. All right, right. all right. Yes, sir. You know, ratings going. He could be here all lunchtime and never buy a drink. I don't know how he does it. It's easy, when you've had the practice he's had. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to decorate this for? Before oh, this finish, this place will look like an amusement arcade. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm not a pub. They're only papering and painting, Stanley. They're not turning it into a fun palace. We don't want you lot coming in here to enjoy yourselves. Why can't they leave it be? Because the place needs freshening up a bit. Like most of the regulars who come in here to send out about the bar staff. Talking of freshening up, put half in there, will you? I will, love. Hello, Ben. Hello, Des. It's two parts of bitter, please, love. What are you doing here? You mean you don't know? Should I? <laughs> I would have thought it was obvious. I have this uh, trouble with my elbow, you know. If I don't exercise it regularly, it seizes up. Oh, really? You'd better get his order in. Yes, well, uh, that might just be a bit of a problem. Mrs. Walker's very particular about serving fellas in overalls in here. She does have her standards to keep up. Oh, no. Well, that's why Newton and Ridley give us the job. Hey, Bob? Definitely. You've not come to decorate this place. Oh, she catches on quick, doesn't she? Pity she didn't pull a pint with the same lightning speed. It's a funny old world, isn't it, Ben? <laughs> You weren't keen on them. Well, you seem to have gone to so much trouble. You certainly seem to enjoy them. Oh, aye. Out like that, pig strotters, cow eels. You don't know what you're missing. Oh, I think I do. More tea? Oh, no tar anymore. Look like a flaming teapot. <laughs> so, what are you planning to do this afternoon? Well, I thought I might set up my telescope, if that's all right by you. Hmm. On that small table by the window, you know. Of course it is. Only people can be funny about that sort of thing, you know. Fellows looking through telescopes through curtains. <laughs> they get the wrong idea of what kind of heavenly bodies you're looking at. The astronomical ones, I hope. No danger. You should come up and have a squint for yourself. I reckon you could get quite interested. Well, I might just do that. Thank you. Curly. Look, I, I'm sorry, but if you're going to be stopping here, there is one thing I shall have to sort out with you. What's that? Well, it might sound silly to you, but, well, I don't know what to call you. Well, what's wrong with Curly? Everyone calls me that. Doesn't seem right somehow. Not now you're living here. And Mr. Watts sounds so formal. What's my real name, you mean? Well, it might help. Well, if you must know, it's Norman. Norman? Oh, I like that. It suits you. You reckon? Oh, it's a very nice name. It's not that I'm knocking it. It's just that I'm not being used to Coldy. Not with everyone calling me Curly. But why Curly? Because I've got straight hair. Really? Hmm. It's like when they call uh, small fellas lofty and fat fellas slim. It's a joke. Oh, I see. <laughs> mm. Right. 
Now we've got that settled, I think I'll make a move. No, now you leave those, I'll see to them. Oh, come on, I'll give you a hand. It'll only take us a couple of minutes. Well, if you insist. I do. Come on. Uh, well, thank you, Norman. <laughs> Has Mrs. Walker made a demand up yet? Not unless she's psychic, love. She's not seen him yet. Mm, she's not choosing the colour I bother with. It's getting it on the walls. <laughs> and not having the luxury of two lovely chaps like you to do the job for me. <laughs> Perhaps you don't know the right chaps, darling. Perhaps what, slapping don't. paint, Tom? There's no to it. Mm. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings. <laughs> eh? Every man to his trade, mate. I mean, look, that's not a bad drop of bitter in that. Oh. Or it was. Oh, come on, give it to you. Ta very much, love. Seeing as how you're twisting my arm. Ooh. Hey. Would I tell you how to keep a good drop of bitter? Well, I mean, I made it with no Picasso, mate, but I've done my share of paint while I've been time, I can tell you. Hey, and I've had no complaints. Mm, you might not have had any complaints, mate, but what pleasure have you got out of it? Pleasure? What are you on about, yeah? Uh, you see, that's the difference between you and me, between you and a craftsman. You see, you see, I look on painting as being like the pursuit of a beautiful woman. The more you put into it, the more you get out. You, you put you put loving care and feeling into what you're doing, the better the results at the end of the day. Am I right? Oh, definitely. <laughs> you can come and whitewash my coal house any day of the week, my love. God swallow. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a coincidence, isn't it, him being here? That's what I thought and all. You watch your step. Don't you worry about me, love. I've had enough of Des Foster's little games to last me a lifetime, and he knows it. Find a bit of these, Bess. Certainly, Councillor. Popped in to see an old mate, have you? Eh? Hey? What's he doing here? Decorating the place. Newton and Ridley sent him. Who's his mate? I don't know. He usually works with his brother. I'm only telling you what the man told me, aren't I? Oh! How are you, old son? Oh, hello, Des. Not seen it in any meetings lately. Well, no, it's not been easy. Pressure of work, you know, happens to us all. Yeah. <coughs> Here. I'll get you that. No, you're all right. Go on, I insist. Go on, then. I'm not stopping long, though. Well, nobody's asking you to, are they? I've not got long myself. I've got work to do. Haven't I bet? One bottle of brown sauce. How much? 42 pence, Dan. I nearly get a pint for that. Ah, but you can't pour a pint over your baked beans on toast, can you? Yeah, well, you could. Wouldn't do much for flavour, though. If anybody comes in, then I'll grab this, will you? Yeah, I will. Hello there. Hi. Just thinking about you. Me? Yes, I've just been going through my petty cash book. I see I haven't paid out for windows for a month. Oh, well, you can uh, pay me now. I haven't paid you because you haven't done them. Oh, well, you see, it's a bit tricky with Ed, Eddie being away, like, you know, and we're getting behind, like... But I tell you what, if your books are m m mucked up, you pay me now and we do them when he comes back. Don't bother yourself, I've done them myself. Taking a bit of a working man, aren't you? What do you expect me to do? I've lights on all day because windows are too mucky to let the daylight in. Remind me to do you a favour the same way next time I see you, will you? He's a bit dodgy, isn't he? Yeah, I think you touched on a sore point, love. What was that? Work. Oh. <laughs> what can I do for you? Uh, give us a packet of custard creams, will you? Right. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? I love custard creams. I can't remember the last time I bought myself a packet. Well, whenever you fancy one with a cup of tea, you know where I am. You're a right one, you, for the ladies, aren't you? I bet you were a devil when you were younger. What do you mean, when I was younger? You're only as old as you feel, you know. Give it all Don't forget. Any time. Ta-ra! Oh, He's a right little whirlwind, isn't he? And the rest. He's just been trying to lure me into his lair with a packet of custard creams. Well, I can't compete with that. <laughs> uh, could buy you a drink, though. Oh, I'd love to, but Alf's just nipped out for his dinner. Oh, well, never mind. I just felt like getting out of the office for half an hour, and I um, couldn't think of better company. Oh, thank you, kind sir. I take it you've had a good morning? Uh, nothing well, Shattery, but at least I've come up with a piece on the graffiti club that I can live with. I'm very glad to hear it. Yeah, I just kept it to, you know, bare description of what's on offer, plus a sort of veiled hint that it could be a venue for a Christmas party if you're really stuck for somewhere to go. I can't see Statham having any objection to that. No, no, but I uh, can't see Mrs Walker and co being exactly over the moon, can you? Maybe she'll string me up with my thumbs if I don't get back. Bye, heck, it must be murder working with a slave driver like me. You've no idea. Now, you think on. You watch your step. Don't want to come in here at tea time and find you below with lover boy. 
There's a thought. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, yeah. She doesn't believe in keeping her goods on the counter, does she, Ed? No, no, she doesn't. I'll tell you something else and all. She has not been able to keep her eyes off us since we come in. I can see I'll have to watch her. No, oh, well, you've not been doing so bad so far. I can see danger signs. Calm down. She flashes her assets at everything in long pants. But what she's after is a mature fella. <laughs> you reckon? Definitely. I mean, these kids, shaped like hairpins, might look great in them discos, but when it comes down to keeping a girl warm in winter, no chance. And you reckon Bet needs keeping warm in winter, do you? Stands out a mile, mate. Well, we might be in with a chance, then. Definitely. Hey, no, hey, no, not we, mate, me. You can forget it, you're not her type at all. Hey, do you reckon they're ever going to get started? <laughs> they don't seem to be showing much signs of life, do they? Flipping heck, they call it work. <laughs> <coughs> Is there uh, <coughs> any chance of making a start today, lads? Two o'clock. Two o'clock? What happens if you start before? Do you turn into pumpkins or something? Would you sell alcoholic beverage outside licensing hours, mate? Well, what's that got to do with that? Well, you can't expect us to hump gear in our own time, then, can you? And we don't need the law breathing down our necks to make sure we don't, either. I think they're trying to tell us something. No, no, not really. Not unless you're interested that it sits two minutes past. Two minutes. Well, it wouldn't have been, would it, if you were up away and hadn't kept us talking? Oh, I'll go and bring the gear around. Yep. What a funny fella. <laughs> How do you spell Siege? I can never remember if it's I before E or the other way around. And you want to be a journalist? Yeah, well, it's just one of those words, isn't it? S-I-E-G-E. -E. So? Is that important? Yeah, of course it's important. The Gazette crossword, isn't it? Get this right and I'm in with a chance of five pounds. I could retire on that. But until then, you're working for me? Mm. This is the masterpiece, is it? That's it. Well? Yeah, well. What do you reckon? You don't sound very enthusiastic, do you? They asked me to do a blurb to go with the advertisement, and that is it. I haven't knocked it. I haven't said it's become a hotbed of drunks and vandals. This bit this hardly says anything, does it? One of Weatherfield's latest night spots is the Graffiti Club, built in the shell of an old warehouse in Rosamond Street. The club is open six nights a week. With live music on Thursdays and Saturdays, there is a licensed bar until midnight. All true. Every word. Yes, but that's not going to get folk turning up by the coach load, is it? And that is not my problem, is it? Now, get that typed up, and as far as I'm concerned, it's ready for the printers. You going out? Yep, I got an appointment at the town hall, four o'clock. I, uh, I doubt I'll be back tonight, so see you in the morning. Yeah, right, Mr. Brown. If there's anything urgent, you can get me at home after about six, OK? Yes, Bye. Thanks. Yeah, Mr Statham. Yeah, Sally here. You asked me to let you know when uh, Mr Barlow had finished his piece on the graffiti club. Yeah, well, he has. Yeah, I'm just typing it now. Yeah, so about half an hour. Oh, well, I don't really think it's up to me to say, Mr. Statham. But I think you should better have a look at it yourself. Yeah. Bye. I mean, take cows. Cows? Yeah. How many cows do you see today with all this? I haven't given it much thought. We don't get a lot down Rosamond Street. Not a lot. And do you know why? Because they're taken off in the nippers, that's why. Right. And that's why they haven't got them when they've grown up. Get away. Yeah, I mean, I mean, not that cow's horns in themselves have any significance. They don't, except to other cows. But, but you see, it's, it's all part and parcel of the silent revolution, isn't it? You know, things that are happening all the time to change the world, and folk never even notice. Well, I suppose if you put it like that. Oh, by heck, have you seen time? If I'm not careful, I'll be chatting to you in my own time. And we can't have that, can we? I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, it's not that I don't enjoy chatting to you, it's just that... Uh, I'd enjoy it a lot more with a pint in me hand. I'll tell you what, you get me one in while I go and clean up. Love to, Chuck, but if I don't get back, my old fella will have me for a floor cloth. But uh, maybe so look after you, won't you, love? See you in the morning. That is, if the cows don't get you first. Well, I haven't got much time myself. Bitter. Pardon? Bitter. It's what a drink. <gasps> Half a pint, Betty, please. Pint. A pint of bitter, please, Betty. Oh, thank you, Rita. Thank you very much. Finish, mate. Yep. Hey, and uh, mind how you go for the next couple of hours, will you? No danger. Off now, councillor. Ah, uh, no. I thought I'd uh, have a quick one before I go. And I was thinking of um, asking you if you fancied having one with me. 
Only thinking about it. All right. I'm asking. Why not? As long as it's only a drink you had in mind. What else? Hey, look, I wouldn't be here, would I, if I hadn't been for our kid? Yes, I did hear something about him putting this job your way. That's right. I was a bit pushed at the moment. And you just happened to be free. Well, you don't turn down jobs like this, do you? Small world, isn't it? I mean, of all the decorators in Weatherfield, who should turn up but you? That's right. Hey, do you know what I reckon? I reckon it's fate. Find a bit of please, love, and whatever you want for yourself. What am I, Alfie boy? What am I? You are. I'm Annie Walker's flipping Edinburgh boy. That's where I am. Oh. Just popped out to the corner shop, Fred. We're a little short of bacon. Half a pound will do. Did you say what sort? Just ask Mr. Roberts. He knows the kind I like. Uh, clean, on smoke. Hey, One of these days, I'm going to give her a right gobful, I promise you. Of course you are, yes, I. Oh, I... Am I awake or is this a nightmare? You're awake. I am, and you're still a nightmare. Pay for these later, all right, Al? It'll have to be, won't it? You're not usually out of your sweaty sheets at this time. I've no choice, have I? Them decorators were round at the crack of dawn, and it was Muggins there that had to let them in. Uh, are you turning up this morning, are you? Is there any reason why I shouldn't be? Well, no, I just thought I'd let Desdo, you know, give him something to look forward to. Tell who you like, lovey. 60p. There you go, Alfie. You know, when you were a lad, I bet you took great delight in pulling legs off spiders. Always did, Alfie. Always did. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Oh, do, Emily. Back again, are we? Yes. Right, heck, you must have a right appetite, this lodger of yours. Yes. I hope you don't like rubbish like this in that paper of yours. Not if I can help it. Oh, oh I nearly forgot something. What? The dinner money, and I didn't have my purse with me. So what? I'll do it tomorrow. All oh, right. Hey, look, you don't mind if I leave you to do the washing that deal, have I? Got to get out. No, you go on. Uncle Albert will do it. <laughs> anyway, I want to uh, do a feature on a new pub that's opening in Park Street. You know, I've got to chase at the contractors, see if I can persuade them to buy some space on the paper. Uh, did you finish that thing you were doing on the graffiti club? Yes, all done and dusted. Oh, that's a relief, good. anyway. Not much of it left, but at least what is this true? Good. The whole thing has been a very good exercise in the art of compromise. <laughs> Bye, love. See you, love. Bye, Uncle Albert. Hello. And so I'm washing up, am I? No, I was only joking. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear it. It's very kind of you. Well, we're not on this air to help one another. What are we on it for? Yes. Uh, in kitchen, are we? Yeah, well, I'm sure I can manage. The... How's he, uh, how's he behaving himself, this young man of yours? Observing the rules of the establishment? I don't know about rules, but he seems to be all right, yes, thank well, you. Well, for what it's worth, my advice would be to start as you mean to go on. Lay the ground rules. Establish custom and convention. I, I don't suppose you've time for a cup of tea, eh? Oh, yes, I have. Thank you very much. It'd be very nice. Oh, really. Somebody's just come in. But it certainly sounded as though... Uh... Don't worry. Leave this to me. Who is it? Declare yourself. You what? Oh, it's Norman. It's all right. Are you sure? You don't want me to, uh... Uh, No, no. You sit there and I'll make us that cup of tea. You can't be too careful nowadays, you know. Oh, I know. What with vandals, thieves and muggers. Hello. Hello, Norman. I just called to collect this. I said I'd lend it to one at Lads. Oh. Why didn't you announce yourself? You could have frightened Mrs Bishop after death. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... It's all right. Oh, a book, is it? What's the subject matter? Or is it not to be mentioned in front of a lady? Science fiction. Oh... Little green men from Mars, is it? Arriving on flying saucers. No. <laughs> You'll have a cup of tea. I'm just putting oh, the no, kettle no, on. I don't want to inter no, interrupt no, that. No, of course you're not. Well, I've got to catch the wagon up anyway, but I'll see you later. Yes. Now, there's a case in point. Do you want to make things crystal clear right from the word go? I know one thing I'm certainly going to make clear. Well, you've got it steady, you lads, haven't you? You fancy a swap? I won't mind. Only the length of time you've been stood there, you're in danger of being undercoated along with the rest of the fixtures and fittings. <laughs> it's a matter of temperament, this job. You need a nice, steady nature. Oh, hi. You're the pick of the bunch, are you? No, when, 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 when was the last time you heard of a painter and decorator committing a serious crime? I mean, murder, say, or grievous bodily harm? No idea. Never. Get away. Foreign to us nature. <laughs> I thought Hitler... What a painter and decorator. Yeah, that's right. Oh, aye. Right. Aye, right, but he gave up, didn't he? You see, that's where he went wrong. He should have stuck at it. 
Oh, decided to show your face, have you? Oh, I think I can manage to show a bit more than that, Fred. Good morning, Bob. Morning. Good morning, Des. Good morning, Bet. Well, I must say, then, that uh, it's a better face than the one you showed first thing this morning. Well, you see, that's the difference between us, Freddy. I improve as the day goes on. Hello, lovey. Hello, lovey. Mrs. Walker would like a word with you, if you don't mind going through the back. I don't mind at all. Come on. Shift. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Oi, lad, you do know, don't you, that we'll be opening soon? Oh, don't worry, love. We'll be out your way in it back by then. Oh, good enough. Hey, have you fetched that crater start-up yet? Go in, don't sweat. I'm very glad to hear it, Fred. Ooh. I couldn't work with women. What, you mean, instead of them with your brush? I mean, they, I mean, they, haven't got, they haven't got any of that nice steady nature we're talking about. You know, it's all nattering and nagging. <laughs> Thank you very much. You are now personal. Oh, just women you don't want anything to do with in general. Exactly. Mm. No, I mean, I, what I was saying, how many women painters and decorators are there? Not a lot. No, they haven't got the temperament. <laughs> Hey, what did you say to her? I said forget it. Yeah. I'm going to be working the hours I'm supposed to be working. Well, you see, we were just trying to make it a bit better for you, know, with Val there. While Des is here, yeah. yeah. Well, we thought that you could take the lunch times off. Just come in in the evenings. Look, Betty, yeah. it was me that gave him the elbow, right? Well, yes, I understood that, lovely, yeah. Well, up and I was knocked a bit off balance when he turned about the blue. But that was yesterday. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life hiding behind pillar boxes every time I see him coming. Hey, I might have known it. You're not exactly a shrinking violet, are you? No. More, um... Go on. More a blooming rose. Too blooming right. <laughs> right, you shouldn't have any problems. Um, it's only undercoat. It'll be dry in about half an hour. Oh, thanks, love. I hope you're not leaving on my account. Well, not a chance of that. Good. And we'll be back as soon as you got rid of the customers. Well, that should be easy to arrange. We'll just let Fred do all the serving. <laughs> you what? Now! Hey, hey, hey. What? Hang on a minute. There's still not going on with it, you and that fella, is there? Whatever makes you ask me that? I don't really know. But there's something I want to say to you. I would have thought, lovey, that you'd have learnt your lesson. What lesson's that, Betty? You know very well what lesson. Now, look, they say once bitten, twice shy. I don't know what it is when you're twice bitten. Twice bitten, Betty. You become immune. Yeah, so that's a clean sweep, any size chimney swept, without dirt or inconvenience, using modern vacuum methods, tell Weatherfield 2361. Yeah. Well, it depends how many insertions you want. Oh, Mr. Barlow. Yeah. Can you hang on a sec? Yeah, sure. Sorry. Yeah, it's four pound for one, seven fifty for two, and nine for three. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be fine, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. Oh, then you're gonna make myself a coffee. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Thought you were off out again. No. Well, look, I'll make the coffee, but um, all it was is Mr. Statham rang to say he'd be here this afternoon and he wants you to be here. Oh, right, yeah. Gonna be here anyway, I think. Yeah. Morning go all right? Oh, well, I'm beginning to know what a sales rat feels like. <laughs> Tired of smiling at people. Yeah, you're not kidding. Well then, stop smiling and I'll get you that coffee. Uh, you say he's uh, calling this afternoon? Yeah. But he said he wouldn't be in again till Friday. What's it all about, do you know? Yes. What? Uh, he asked me to get you him a copy of that piece you did on the graffiti club. The rewritten one? You took it to him last night? Oh, why on earth didn't you tell me what you were going to do? Oh, Mr. Statham, he told me not to. So, what does this mean? He wants it rewriting again? He didn't say. Well, he'd have one hell of a fight if he does. Coffee. <laughs> Well, take the tax on that, Stanley. Have you any idea how much that would be without it? No. Less than half. Care away. Yeah. I know they've got to put something on for, like, uh, the Falklands and things like that, you know, but, I mean, when it comes to opera and ballet, that's what I object to. Oi, Fred, one of the books is off. Oh, I'll, I'll see to it. Come on. I mean, Stanley, how often have you been to the opera and the ballet? 
Oh, not much. No, no. But every time you stand there supping, mate, you're paying for it, aren't you? Think of that. Everybody all right? Surviving. Yes, thank ah. you. <laughs> hey, where's Desi Arnett and his mate? Don't tell me that Bet scared him off. Uh, no, and they're working through the back while we're open, you know. Oh, then when they come in here, does she go through to back? But to tell you the truth, she seems to have got over the shock of him turning up again. No, she was bright as a button when oh. I saw her this morning. Hey, up here the art must be dinner time. Yeah, it must be. There's a strong smell of paint in here, though, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. Mind you, it's not unpleasant, because it helps clear the sinuses. Oh, yeah. Hey, are them pies all made or what? Not exactly, no. More sort of adopted. Go on, then, I'll risk it. One meat and potato. Two. Two? He's a growing lad. Or a greedy pig, I'm not sure. And what would you like to eat? I'll have a pie as well, please. Coming up. And that's another thing. What? How many women nowadays know what it is to do a bit of home baking? Not one in 20. <laughs> and you reckon Bet's not the only sort here? <laughs> Be cruel to put her in a kitchen. Her type, they think that cooking's something that's only done by foreigners. <laughs> that's one ninety-five altogether. No extra charge if you'd like to use the sauce. Well, it looks like business as usual, Des or no, Des? Well, I think she's very brave. I mean, it can't be easy standing up there knowing that we know what we know. Not something you'd do? Oh, no, I think I'd find it very difficult. I don't suppose she's finding it any easier than you would. She's just that bit clever at not letting it show. You could at least have told me you wanted to see it again. I could have, yes. So why didn't you? What does it matter? I've seen it. I read it. But I'm telling you, it won't do. It wouldn't do before and it still will. And can I ask why? Oh, it's not a bad article. Reads well. Takes into account different points of view. Even your spelling's good. Thank you. But it's not what's wanted. Well, it's what I think is wanted. Oh, you do? Yes. Then let me put it another way. It's not what the advertiser wants. Oh, yes, and you may not like that. And sometimes, God knows, I might not like it, but it's the way of this particular bit of the world. The sooner you understand that, Kenneth, the better. What the advertiser wants? Yes. And what about our readers? What about them? Well, surely we've got to keep faith with them. Why? Why? What do they do for us? They don't buy the paper. They get it shoved through their letterbox, whether they like it or not. It's the advertisers who do the pain. So if this guy... Baldwin. ...comes in here... And he says he wants a series of full-page ads at 350 quid a page. And would we do a feature to go along with them? Then what he wants to read about is how wonderful his club is, how wonderful he is. He doesn't want to read about opposition from local residents and late-night noise. I mean, would you? It's true. Makes it worse. Oh? Well, if there had been these local protests or whatever, he's going to be even more sensitive to us mentioning them. Look... I've come down like a ton of bricks as I've had to. Either we get this sorted out now, or we're all in bother. So you want me to write a pack of lies? Yes. Well, look, there's the truth and there's the old truth. Now, we can't afford the old truth, only part of it. Look, in practice, all it means is dropping the odd sentence or two. Yes, about the uh, resident's opinion and late night noise. Yeah, exactly, lose all that. And then add in a kind word here and there about this guy Baldwin. Now, what's his first name? Mike. Then what we want to hear about is, is enterprising Mike Baldwin, popular Mike Baldwin. Let him know how much we love him. See? Well, you can do it. I know you can do it. I mean, it's not as if you've got anything personal against the blog, is it? Could you have a sleep? Just a doze. Must be tiring work. Well, you get used to it. Get used to anything, can the human body. I mean, look at your Indian fakirs, you know, holy men. Oh, yes. Some of them never lie down. Sleep standing up. Can even take their own appendix out. Goodness. I wonder if they do that standing up. Norman, when you came in this morning and, and Mr. Subden was here... Yeah? Well, I mean... I wouldn't want you to get the idea, well, any ideas about me and Mr. Sugden. Oh, no, no. Good. 
Uh, and there's something else I wanted to say. Yeah? Well, if you want to bring any of your friends or, or girlfriends back here, well, I wouldn't want you to worry that I'll be in the way. No, I won't. Thanks. And if you want to ever bring oh. me... I shouldn't think I'll be bringing many boyfriends home. Well, you never know. Norman, I've been married twice and... Well, there's no reason why you shouldn't know. My first husband was shot dead trying to prevent a robbery. Yeah? Yes. And my second marriage... Well, that had its tragic side as well. He wasn't... Oh, he wasn't shot, no. No, Arnold died from an illness. But not before I'd learnt that my marriage to him was bigamous. Flipping heck. Anyway, all I wanted to say is you must regard this as your home and don't feel I'll mind in the slightest if you want to bring any of your friends back here. No, I won't, thanks, but after what you've been through, I think you'll find most of them dead boring. Bye, love. It's all right, sir. Yes. All right, if I get off now. Ah, go on. I wish I could. Oh. Chain to the counter, are you? It seems like that sometimes. Oh. See you, love. Ah, ta-da. Oh, hello. Hello, love. Oh, hi. What can we do for you? Sell us a pint of milk. I think I can manage that. You know, I think there's a lot of people around here seem to think I've got one hell of a lot of influence. Oh, how's that? Well, how about the way I fixed it with Newton and Ridley so that me and my mate could paint the Rovers? Oh, 22p. Nobody thinks you've fixed anything. Well, I'm glad to hear that. It's just that Beth happens to have a lot of friends around here. Well, you can count me among them. And they care about her getting hurt, just because you turned up like a bad penny. Oh, I see. Good. Well, do you know what I think? What? I think that for every good friend of Beth's who's worried about her, there's another two that just can't wait to see what's going to happen. And she's quite capable of looking after herself. Yeah, all right. And you might not believe this, but I happen to think a lot of that lady myself. And the last thing I want to do is to make things awkward for her. I didn't fix that job. But I'm not going to turn her down, neither. No, all right. Point taken. Well, I'll tell you another thing. What? This place could do with a lick of paint. Shall I give you a quote? You've got the cheek of the devil. So they say. I'll see you. Aye, uh, happen. I've got to get back to the office. I haven't a clue what time I'll be home. You can have your tea before you go, can't you? Oh, not really, no. What's so urgent all of a sudden? Well, there's this article on the graffiti club. Satan wasn't happy about it. He did what he asked, didn't you? Apparently, I didn't do enough to keep the advertiser happy. Advertiser? Yeah, Baldwin. I somehow forgot to say how wonderful he is, or at least I didn't say it often enough. Satan even asked if I had something personal against him. Yeah, well, he wouldn't be far wrong then, would he? Oh? Well. Well, what's that supposed to mean? <sighs> Look, you say you can't write what Statham wants because... Because I'll be letting everybody down. And the fact that it's Baldwin has got nothing to do with it. You know, it'd just be the same if it was anybody else's club. I'm just asking you to be honest, Ken. Just be honest about it. So what do you suggest I do, then? Well, why can't you just do what's asked? I mean, I know now it's about it, but from what you said, it should be easy enough to write. Oh, it is. It's easy enough. But OK, I will. I'll do it. Good. I'll say what a wonderful, popular, successful man Baldwin is. What do you want me to say? Nothing. Forget it. I'll be back late, OK? Yeah. Yeah, well, and don't forget we want them back. I'll be counting the spots. Right, you fancy a game? Oh, give over. I'm working, Stanley. I'm not here for the good of my health, you know. Hold me a change. <laughs> you can have one, then. Uh, just half. I don't want to get stopped on my bicycle. Yes. A pint and a half of your best bitter, please. Be painting the town red tonight, then, will you? I could be talked into it if somebody else was interested in going along. Just a joke, Des. Just a joke. Well, you lads must be somewhat special. How's that, though? Well, Mrs. Walker's just been saying how hard you've worked, giving a fine example of British craftsmanship at its mm. best. Oh, give over, love. You'll have us blushing. No, mm. it's nice to be appreciated for a change. It's not everybody recognises a craftsman. No, I'm sure it isn't. Anyway, they're on the house, love. Well, you've made one convert today anyway. I had hoped to have made another. There. Courtesy of Annie Walker. For services rendered to her woodwork. Cheers. Hey, I was going to buy you a drink and all. Were you? 
And it'll give us a chance later on. Somewhere other, other than here. But for old time's sake. For what? All right, forget about the old times. I'm trying to. Yeah, but tonight, though. Tonight, love, I'm working. Well, tomorrow! They say behind every successful man there's a woman, don't they? Yeah, why? No, 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 I think it's right, is that? It's when woman's in front of them that they turn into blithering idiots. Ah, Mr Ogden. How do? How do? Fancy a game. Ah, right, go on then. I'll get myself a drink first. Ah, cheers. Oh, aye. Yeah, no. Bitter, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> One little drink won't do you any harm. No, it won't do me any harm. I just don't think it's very nice to come in spying and see how Bet's getting. Oh, come on, shut up. Is it evening? How do? Hello. Evening, ladies. Well, looks like we haven't missed much. Hello, Still girls. I, I was just saying, Betty, have we missed out? Oh, I don't know what's going on. I've given her my advice. That's the end of it, as far as I'm concerned. She can do as she likes. <laughs> but what would I bet if we all thought the same way? We'd have no to gossip about it. And a very good thing, too, in my opinion. Now, what do you want to drink? Uh, a vodka and tonic. And uh, a sherry, sweet, sweet sherry. OK, lovely. Yeah. Just come back. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Tell you what. Why don't you make a play for death, see if that starts Oh, out. yes, why don't I? I look, Mr Sutton's in the snow. Why don't I make a play for him as well? Then they can fight it out between them. Who would you want to win? <coughs> I haven't thought maybe. Oh. Hey, fancy the other half, then. Eh, uh, no, no, Tama, we're making tracks. Um, oh, no, uh, no, I think I'll stop for a bit. Uh, finish this. Madness. Absolute madness. See ya. Bet. Do you want serving, mate? Oh, no, I'll just uh, wait till Bet's got a minute. Oh, shall I take a message? Push off, Fred. Well, Bet, there's somebody else to see you. Off. What? Look, straight up, let's have a drink. Nothing else. Just a drink and a chat. I'm working. Not tomorrow, then. Just a drink and a chat? Yeah. OK. Oh, hi. Hi. I saw the light. Thought I'd see how you're getting on. Just about finished. Yeah. And I'm sorry I went behind your back. I mean, sending in the other one. Probably a good job that you did. Ah. Well, this seems fine. It really does. You think so? Yeah. Don't you? Well, let's just say, I know a lot of people who aren't going to like it one little bit. Hey, I thought you didn't get up till dinner time. Don't worry, I'm only up till our Vera goes to work. <laughs> and then I'm back to bed for the page three and a pot of tea. Did you get any bread? Uh, no, not come yet. Hey, yesterday's will do. I just fancy a bit of toast. Our Vera's on roast. Anyway, there's roast. no bread in. Hey, hey, did you hear me shouting you just now, bawling my head off? No. You know what you've got to do today, don't you? Very little. Go to Manchester Airport and pick up Eddie and Marion, 12 o'clock. Well, I thought they'd come back tomorrow, not today. Today, 12 o'clock, now be there with your taxi. Leave it with me. Look, am I getting through to you? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you still sleepwalking? I might be. 12 o'clock, Manchester Airport, don't forget. Shit. Don't be panicked, women, eh? Why can't they be cool and in control like us fellas? Hey, thanks, boss. Put this on uh, Vera's list when she comes in and does her shopping with you. After all, that's what I do give her housekeeping for. I'm surprised you do that. Hey, I've only just started recently, you know. Oh. Good morning, goodbye. Oi, 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 where's the fire? Ed, Andrea can fit me in at nine o'clock. Well, you only had your hair done last Thursday. So who's counting? Psychology, Al. Smart I look, smart I am. Flaming muck, you lot are making. Rubbish. It's you don't clean behind that bar often enough. I'll have you know, this bar, I keep it as clean as a nurse. I'm very particular about this bar, mate. Just watch where you're slapping that paint, that's all. Talking about muck, where does it all go to? Have you ever thought? You what? Well, your hands get dirty, right? You wash them. 
Where does all that dirt go to? It just doesn't disappear, you know. It's molecules like everything else. And what about crumbs? Crumbs? Uh, all them crumbs dropping off Ettles cakes and cream crackers, where do they all go to? I reckon there's a big cloud of crumbs up there wanting to settle on us and suffocate us. I reckon crumbs are a bigger threat to us than nuclear missiles. Is your mate bonkers or something? Oh, what do you expect? His mother used to play big drum in a brass band, you know. Oh, I and... <laughs> yeah, while well, she was having him and all. That's why the top of my head's flat. <laughs> Looks like pointed to me. Morning sports, all Sam right. Des. Don't tell me. You're coming early to brew up for us. How did you guess? Her worship's still ruling the world from her bed, is she? I can tell you there's a little old woman up there making a whip. Not one of your better days, eh, Fred? Oh, dear. Des? Yeah? Do you like my hair like this, this style? Yeah, it's great. No, I'm going to fur dresses. I thought I might have a change. Oh, I'd like it anyway. You know that. You know, you overdo it sometimes. I'd watch it, love. New hairdo, eh? It's like a spider spinning a new web. Very interesting insect, a spider. Did you know, for instance, one sort of male spider, when he's wooing a female, twangs away on a cobweb like Mantabani? Fancy that. Yeah, it works and all. She lets him, Ooh, you know, but then... Yeah? She scoffs him up. There's a lesson for you there, Desmond. Belt your bob. This window's cracked. Eh? I'm just saying there's a crack in this window. See, as long as you're back here for opening time, on the dot. I will be, Betty, I promise. You're not going somewhere special on your night off tonight, are you? Well, a girl always lives in hopes, you know, Betty. Not to mention dangerously, if you're not careful. Mm. Hey, uh, Mrs. Yeah? Did you know this window was cracked? It's what? Yeah. You, you, you can just see it here, look. Oh, yeah. I'll bet that's what the noise Mrs. Walker heard last night when they were turning out from the graffiti. It's you. Thought it was Emily. You really have caught me with my feet up. <laughs> I nearly said pants down. What's the matter? <sighs> Got a bit of a headache, you know. I feel a bit off. Oh, you didn't sleep very well last night, did you? Kept feeling you thrutching about. Thrutching about? Yeah, it's what pigs do. They thrutch. Oh. Do you want a paracetamol? Yeah, please. Why don't you go back to bed? <clears throat> no, I'm not that bad. It's a storm in a teacup, Ken, really. I mean, how long do people remember what they read in the papers? They read it in the morning, they wrap the chips in it in the evening. Yeah, no, but everybody's going to be expecting fireworks. They're not even going to get a damp squib. I, know, I should have stuck to my guns. And been back on the dole? Yeah, if it came to that. It would have. Listen. You go to bed for a couple of days till all this is died down, and I'll tell everybody you're ill, which you are. Sorry. You'll just have to grin and bear it, won't you? Well, bear it. And then, what you do, you put the article you wrote knocking the graffiti in next week's paper when my Baldwin isn't advertising. Is that what you do? Like a shot. <laughs> you know what my greatest failing's been, don't you? I'm not unscrupulous enough. <laughs> I could have told you that. A social conscience with a soft centre. What a combination. You've got no chance. Yeah. I suppose I could always disappear to a health farm. I've always wanted to get a health farm. Can you afford it? No. <laughs> Gone off them little cigars then, have you? I don't feel in a little cigar mood today. Business is booming. By the looks of things, it's going to get better. Club was packed last night. I tell you, by the weekend, I'll probably be smoking a Vanus. It's all right for some. Where the world, my son? Where the world? Here, you've not been having your head on all this time. Do you know what the time is? Of course I know what time it is, Alf. And if you doubt about you, you're coming out with change my frock. Yeah. Oh. Why don't you get a helper then? Change your frock. I know what I'd like to do for her. I'd like to lock her up till she gets this Des Foster out of her hair. It's all ended in tears once, but will she learn? What is it about blokes like you and Des Foster, eh? 
What do you mean, blokes like me and Des Foster? Well, you're like Louis and Bees at a flower show, a different woman every week. I have been going out with the same bird now for 17 days. Oh, congratulations. Let's see if you're still going with her on the 18th day. Well, will it be my fault if I'm not? By then, I've probably been uh, waylaid and grabbed by somebody else. I don't always do the chasing, you know. Sometimes I am the victim. Oh, I believe you. It can be very weird. You want to see the dark rings under my eyes some mornings? Do you ever get chased by women, Stanley? No, certainly no. Just a fact, really. Mm. According to Mike Baldwin, you should be grateful. Ah, well, I am. I am. <laughs> Hello, Stanley. Your phone's been going all morning. It's getting on my nerves. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there somebody ringing up to say you've won a fortune? It'll be our Linda ringing up to tell him what she wants for a Christmas present. <laughs> now, um, I'll have a couple of them balm cakes, please. And, uh, yes, I'll have a custard tart. Right. Hey, hey up, pal. Being happy, fat, grosser might be good for custom, but you take up too much room, cop. Elsie. Hey. Hey, just a minute. You're going somewhere. Don't be daft. Whatever give you that idea? Just it. You're right. You've lost the marbles. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hey, John, I know you. No, not really. Sorry, Betty, but she'd only double booked, hadn't she? Could have made another appointment, you know. Yes, I know, but you know me and hairdressers are like a drug. I mm. work twice as hard for rest at dinner, yeah. I know. Did you, uh, did you choke her off? Didn't think there were much point. In this mood, it was like water off a duck's back. I know. The gloss finish artist, not forgetting his brush. You really think you cracked it again with Blondie, don't you? Just going to see what happens. Should I tell you something? Can I stop you? The time and effort you spend chasing women, you'd have been a millionaire if you spent as much time in some useful pursuit. You reckon? You know women have slowed down the march of progress by at least half, don't you? They're a big distraction, you see, to fellas, the brainy sex. If there hadn't been women, we'd have had sliced bread hundreds of years since. All right, all right, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, Hello, Asitana? Who? Oh, Uncle Wolf, yes. What can I... Marion's mother? Well, what's up? In hospital. Well, what's... Oh, no. If you've gone off living round here, you know, I can always take you back to the airport. Yeah, it does look a bit grassy after the old cell splends easel. Oh, it's on. Well, for now. Give him that bag. Why? Because you're going to carry me over the threshold. After what have you eaten last week? Hey, could always take a legs for you. Here you Come on, hurry up. Now, don't drop me. You're all right. You'll only bounce back into my arms <laughs> if I do. <laughs> Stop tickling me! <laughs> Thank you kindly, sir. And for yourself. Hey, you're a tough. Hey, did you bring a lot of duty-free, Matt, man? Enough. I was just asking. See ya. Hello, love. Oh, I'm glad to see you. Oh, did you have a nice time? Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Weather was lovely, hotel was lovely. It was all perfect. Oh, I am pleased. Uh, hey, and we didn't have a row. Not one single row. Oh, well, a lie. Spanish dancer asked him to dance, and I thought he accepted a bit too quick. What? It's uh, your mother. What's wrong with her? She's in hospital. Hospital? What's the matter with her, Elsie? Well, according to your Uncle Wilf, it's a stroke. Shut your eyes, else. See what Father Christmas has got you. What's wrong? It's my mother. She's in hospital. What, she had an accident or something? A stroke, my Uncle Wilf says. Which hospital is she in, Elsie? The General? Ward 2. Will you take me, Eddie, please? Yeah, I'll go and find Jack Duckworth. I'm sorry, Eddie. Here, that's for you. Oh, shouldn't have bothered, love. I was thinking I might specialise in running holiday makers to the airport, you know. 
Things like that. Very lucrative. Oh, you get a good tip then from Eddie Hayes. Oh, well, well, he offered, but I declined, you know, him being a, a mate and a neighbour like. Oh, it's all right. Don't panic. I won't be nasty for a sub. Quite lost this week myself. Hey, well, as a matter of fact. No. Jack. Well, it didn't take you long to get back to the physic, did it, eh? Come Mind on. your wine's not a proper drink, you see. Look, this is a job, mate. Can you run us out of Betty, like now? Oh, come on, I'm halfway through a pint. It's Marion's mum. She's been taken into hospital. In that case, what are you doing stood there? It's our mate. Oh, eh? Hey, what we're all that about? Well, it's not about Marion's mother being taken poorly, you know. Oh, it's not very nice to come back from your honeymoon to, is it? No. Hey, it's still the come back together, isn't mm. it? I mean, me and Jack, we come back from Blackpool on three, on more different trains. Skate around for the last three days. You never said that you went to Blackpool on your honeymoon, did you? You always said you went to the North Northwest Coast. Coast. Yes, the honeymoon was spent at the North West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should I collect some empty glasses then? You can do a fan dance on the bar top, as far as I'm concerned, Bubbles. Now, Fred, you know your heart had never stand this if I did. Still, what a nice way to go, eh? <laughs> Would you like some pudding? I think we can do a black forest gatto or cheese and biscuits. Gatto with a dollar for cream. Uh, not for me. I don't want to spoil my appetite for tonight. Oh, where are you going? Well, I thought I might go for a meal. <laughs> you interested? Yes, I am. Well, it'll be a pity to waste a new end, it? It would. One gatto. You call that playing it by ear? Spending money on her? Me? I've spent very little on women. I've never needed to. Well, with your fatal charm. I'm my repartee. <laughs> Did you know, in this country, in an acre of grassland here, in England, there could be two million spiders? Two million. I wish you'd shut up about spiders. Well, you know it is when you've been wakened up and you can't get back to sleep again. I do. And all your worries pop into your head and get bigger and bigger. I have to get up and make myself a cup of tea sometimes. I tell you what, I'm having second thoughts about that graffiti club. All right, I know we're involved with them business-wise, but I never thought it would attract crowds of loonies. Do you know, there were a lad and girl playing hopscotch outside our bedroom at two o'clock this morning. Oh, well, there'll be an improvement after this article of Ken's is published, won't there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten that. Well, more power to his elbow, or wherever it is he writes with. See ya. Ta-da. Ta it is going to be in tomorrow's paper, isn't it? Ken's article. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Are you, uh, yeah, right. are you all right, Ken? Yeah, why? Well, you just look a bit under the weather, that's all. Oh, I've got a bit of cold coming on, I think. All right. Time of year for it, innit? You know me, I'll be coughing and spluttering every morning till next May. Really? Always was a martyr to Qatar, me. Ken? Hello? Ah, just the two very gentlemen I want to see. Would you mind stepping this way, please? This way, love. Right. Mm. What do you say to that? Well, what do I say to what? That crack. What crack? There! Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can just see one, yeah, well. Yeah, well, what's it got to do with us, Betty? Well, <laughs> it wasn't there yesterday, but it was there today. After some of your customers had a row outside here last night, Mr Baldwin. Oh, now, come on, how do you know it was one of my customers? I mean, did you see him? Well, no, I didn't see it, but Mrs Walker heard him. She only sleeps just above here. Oh, now, come on, it could have been anybody. Mrs Walker is definite that it was somebody from your club. <laughs> she wants that add into that piece she gave you for your article. About the rotten window, I mean. <clears throat> yeah, well, uh, it's already been written. Oh, well, can't it be rewritten? Well, I'd have thought it'd been rewritten quite a few times by now. Aiken? No, I'm sorry, Betty, I'm not having now. I mean, it could have been anybody, could it? Um, it could have been somebody leaving here last night, even. Mrs. Walker is definite that it was somebody from his club. And she hopes that you're going to be very, very critical of the graffiti club in your paper. How do you think she looked? Not so good. No, she didn't, did she? Still, it's early days after what happened to her. Yeah. She looks so frail. Oh, what a homecoming, eh? Three hours ago, we're over the moon looking forward to everything. Well, I'm still looking forward to everything. Not on the chains. Your mum will get better. Yeah, of course she will. I mean, like Sister said, it could have been a lot worse. She might have... I'm sorry, Eddie. I'll tell you what. Let's have a quick sniff of the Spanish brandy. That booked us up over there once or twice. Hey, I didn't know you were such a good dancer. Well, you know what they say about well-built fellas? You mean fat fellas? I'll ignore that. 
well-built fellas are very light on their feet. Of course, it depends on who they're dancing with. Oh, I'll ignore that, otherwise I might just bunk you one. <laughs> Carmen. Bet her name was Phyllis and she came from Oldham. Phyllis? With eyes like that? She looked right into me soul. <laughs> yeah, dear. <laughs> Here's to Mr and Mrs Eddie Yates. And Baby Yates. Oh, are you? Have you got any idea yet whether it's going to be a boy or a girl? Oh, of course I flipping haven't. Only if it's a boy, you've got to get his name down quick for eating. Oh, you have to. Hey, I'll tell you what. When it starts kicking, I'll try and find out whether he's got big feet or small feet. Big feet for a boy, small feet for a girl. Can it sell that way? you believe anything about this baby, won't you? Well, I don't know nothing about babies, do I? <laughs> no, you don't. Hey, I'd better ring Maggie and tell her I won't be in work tomorrow. Mm. Eddie, we didn't find out the times of the visiting. Any time the sister said. Oh, that's good. It's not because they think she's critical. No, no, I think that's for everybody. Oh, I do hope she gets better. She will. Of course she will. But she looks so frail and old. I never thought of her being old before. Hey, listen to this. My husband and my best friend have always been close and it hasn't bothered me. But recently they rearranged the furniture in the lounge and bought new curtains for our bedroom. Do you think I have any reason to be worried? What are you going to advise her to do? I'm not going to advise her to do anything. If she's that daft, she deserves everything she gets. <laughs> do you deal with all the letters to Ken's paper? It must be very interesting. Only the ones to the agony column, and not all of them. Just the ones where Ken thinks a woman's insight might be valuable, whatever that is. I wrote to an agony column once. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just reached this low ebb one day. Well, my best friend had just become engaged to somebody I'd introduced her to, a, a boy I rather liked, and mini skirts were in, and I didn't wear one. The bus seemed to be shrinking when it should have been growing, so I... I got very depressed. Oh, Bert. So I wrote to this woman on this magazine, you know, asking how I could improve myself and be more successful with boys. And? Well, she told me to make the best of myself and become very knowledgeable about one subject, like cricket. Cricket? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not very helpful. Not very. I stopped getting the magazine after that. <laughs> Hello, hello, love. How did you get yeah. on at the dentist? Well, she went in smiling and she came out smiling. What a brave girl. It didn't hurt. Oh, well, you'll have to go for me next time. I have to go. <laughs> and I must be off. Rita will wonder whatever's happened to me. I was only supposed to be delivering a few magazines and I've been out for two hours already. <laughs> and I'm naughty girl. <laughs> Bye. 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 Honestly, that girl. She's a scream. Mummy. Yes, love. Can I go and tell Auntie Ellie that I've been to the dentist and had a tooth filled? In the hopes that she might give you something, like 10p. I know you. Go on, then. Come straight back. Bye. And how uh, are you? Oh, so-so. So-so. I thought I was getting over it, but... Uh... Oh, yeah, it's nervous tension, that. Early night for you tonight, mate. Yeah, so I can be all clear-headed and clear-eyed ready to face the music tomorrow? There won't be any music, I'm telling you. I'm going to have to eat dirt, and you know it. Oh. You don't half get yourself in some fixes for a grown fella, don't you? Thank you. That's enough milk, thanks, sir. Uh, black for me. Sure. That was a very nice meal. Yeah, not bad. Have you been here before? Yes. I'm not going to ask you. Good. Uh, very thank you. How are you? You know, I think we should have had a photo taken here tonight. Why? So we could have uh, circulated it round all interested parties. 
Sonny and Bean. That's what I'm telling everybody. <laughs> There's a turn up for the book, though. May come in to work the pub. He didn't swing it, did he? Oh, you mean that's the job especially? Mm. No way. Would you have got in touch again after... Uh... I don't know. Would you? I missed you. It was your decision. Yes, it was. <laughs> but then, fate stepped in. Oh, that's what you call <laughs> it. Oh, I'm a great believer in fate. Pushing your luck the way you do. <laughs> So let's just relax and enjoy it. To coin a phrase. Ah. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, holy bun. Cup of tea for <sighs> Oh, chilly, isn't it? Chilly, and it was yesterday when we woke up. Oh, oh it's funny to be back to reality. This isn't reality. Reality starts tomorrow when I'm on the bins. This is still your honeymoon. That's the only reason you got a cup of tea. <laughs> what are you going to do today? I'll have to go and see your man, won't we? Oh, you don't have to come, love. I will if you want me to. No, there are other things for you to do. Yeah, I've been thinking it'd be a good idea if I went down the estate agents. But looking round here, it'd definitely be a good idea. Yeah, it suddenly seems so much smaller. I mean, when you used to come round, I mean, it used to be, you know, cosy. How do we manage? <laughs> well, we definitely won't manage with a kid, no, will we? Look, I'll drop you off at your mum's and, uh, and then I'll scoot round the housemongers. Hey, Eddie Yates buying a house. Eddie and Marion Yates buying a house. Oh, yeah. Sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, so that then? Oh, aye, but not very suntanned. Well, there won't be, would there? Hey, did they bring you home? Yeah, a Spanish doll and a pair of castanets. Hey, yeah, I've got a pair of castanets, you know. There's like dancers painted on. That's them wooden ones with dancers on. Yeah. Hey, can you play them at all? Because uh, I can't get out of mine, you know. I like a few more things in our house. Say not for playing, you daft ape, but for hanging up. Mind you, if that fellow with the tight pants and the Cuban heels turned up, I'd have him very handy on you. <laughs> hey, well, if, it, if he ever came through our door, kid, it wouldn't be a pair of castanets I'd reach out Come for. Come on. Uh, were you thinking of paying for them fags? Oh, heck, uh, can you take out my Christmas club money? You're not in the Christmas club. Well, can I join? You joined at 11, 11 months too late. Come oh, on, man. I might want to be going airless. Come on. Once more into the Valley of Darkness toward the five hundred. Hmm, likely. There you are. Don't say I never do note for you. Oh, oh. That's 20 fags, Alf. Remind me. Oh, I don't know. You won't bear a duck with between you. Why don't you chuck them? You know you hate paying for them. If only I could, Alf. If only. If you'd live a lot longer, you'd be happier, you'd be healthier, and you'd be a sight richer. You could say as much for giving up fellas. Well, you said it, not me. Uh, not that I was going to mention it. Yes, but... Alf, yes. Don't go on. That was Des you heard last night. I heard him. Well, then you heard now. He never come up them stairs. Well, I wasn't listening that closely. I'm not that sort. Just to recognise his voice. I don't understand you. Well, you don't have to. There's many tried, including me, and got nowhere. You want your head examining? I thought you'd see the light about him. Call me daft, that's all. Well, I do. I would. I don't know why I'm either. I mean, it's just I don't like to see somebody. Hey, hang well, on I... a minute, Alf. You mean you care what happens to me? You care what happens to Bet Lynch? Well, yeah. Well, isn't that nice? There's not many in that gang. It's a very exclusive club. You've got more friends than you know about, and none of them want to see you taking up with him. I am not taking up with him. I've seen light fit to dazzle. But what are you bothering with him at all for then? Because he's a laugh. As long as you only believe one half of what he says. T'other half's all right, he's good company. Yeah, it's company he'll share about and all, because you didn't think he's finished them games. I know him. I know him and all, Alf. I know him very well. He's got all kinds of women. Well, he wouldn't have, would he? Unless he had something about him that women like. He's sad, Alf, but true. I don't think he can help it. No, but you can. Yes, I know I can. And it makes all the difference. Right, I'm about done. Are you working at home today? Uh, this morning, yes. Uh, Twelve o'clock, I'm interviewing the manager of the gas showroom. Oh, what's he done? 
Well, I just thought there might be a piece there, you know, with the government talking about selling off the gas business. What it means on the high street, what it means to you and me, the consumer, that sort of thing. Pity you didn't get in with him before we bought the announced new gas cooker. We might have got some of off. Actually, he was buying the gas cooker that gave him the idea, but, uh, you know me, dear, I'm not that kind of journalist they can corrupt. Uh, fearless Ken Barlow, the man they can't gag. Yeah, well... <laughs> oh, is this the latest recorder? Yes. Never said it'd come. No. Uh, well, it has. Where's that piece on the disco? Is it in? Yes. Oh, that's a terrible photograph of Mike. Oh, at least there's something unflattering on the page, even if it's the only thing. Who was it? You know when they did that, uh, would you buy a used car off this man? Oh, Richard Nixon. Yeah, yes. well, you wouldn't, would you? <laughs> disco brings new pulse to blight sight. Yeah, terrible headline. Did you write it? No, no, that was Statham's responsibility. But for all the rest, I plead guilty. Well, this bit about Mike Baldwin, did you write this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you've laid it on a bit thick, haven't you? Yeah, well, editorial policy came down after some discussion on the side of flattery. Do you think you're sending him up? I hope there'll be no doubt in his mind. It's Burley. What made you call him Burley? Oh, he just seemed to go with Baldwin. God. Burley Mike Baldwin, the London businessman who learned to love the North, gets more pleasure than most out of watching the dancers at his own discotheque. When he sees a pair of well-filled jeans go going by, that's sexist, you know that, don't you? <laughs> he has the satisfaction of knowing they were probably made at his own factory across the road, where the popular entrepreneur is known to all as the debonair dynamo of denim. You can't put that. Well, I have. It's there in print. Well, who's ever called him the debonair dynamo <laughs> of denim? I have. But now you read it out, I've got reservations. I think maybe I didn't go quite far enough over the top. Hey, have you seen this? Yeah, it's the first time I've ever read anything in there. You usually go straight in the bin. Well, that's all it's fit for. Mm. From what it says here, it's, it's wonderful, that graffiti club. I mean, where are all the things he was going to say about it? Well, according to this, it's, it's a boon to the community. I'm surprised at Ken. I mean, he was the main one against it, wasn't he? When it was very first thought of, it was him that called that meeting against that planning permission. Aye, well, he's had his back scratched since then, hasn't he? I think so, Frank. Yeah, and you know by, don't you? The debonair dynamo of denim, that's so. Well, I didn't think he particularly liked Mark Baldwin. Oh, no, but he likes the colour of his money, doesn't he? Oh. Going in the bin, this, that's all it's been. No, for. it's not. <laughs> Mrs. Walker wants to see that. Yeah. She'll go mad when she does. I'll take it up to her. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can you fill this tar? <coughs> you know, you and your mate, you've grew up more than Mr. Newton and Mr. Ridley you do. Well, it's all we can <coughs> do. We're not educated like you. We can't pass time reading papers all day. Look, mate, I'll be here long since you've left. I know your mate likes a bit of overtime, though. Some of us just walked in. You can pat him and stroke him, Bob. But don't feed him. You'll never get rid. Hiya. You're getting on famously, aren't you? Yeah. I'm losing myself in my work. It's the only cure for a broken heart. You're kidding yourself, Des. <laughs> There's no cure for people like you at all. Hey. Then enjoy yourself last night. Fantastic. I had to keep pinching myself to see if I was still awake, and most of the time I was, unfortunately. Oh, don't worry, it didn't show. Oh, I was worried I might have been snoring, in case it bothered other people in the restaurant. <laughs> Why is it you're the only woman who can make me laugh? Because it's my ambition, Des. And one day I'm going to make you laugh on the other side of your face. On the other side of both your faces, possibly. Well, I'm willing to give you a chance. Any night you like. I'll think about it. When the numbness is worn off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Hey, it's up. laughs> what are you chuckling about then? I don't know. It's something new to me. Can I pick your brains, Alf? If there's any left to pick, you can. I just want you to know about what you do to get a mortgage. What do you want to know? Well, I mean, what do you have to do, like? Oh, well, you go into a building society and you ask for a mortgage. Well, is that all? Well, have you been put in by with a building society? Oh, ah, yeah. Well, you're ready for slates, then. Just go in and ask. Do I have to go through a solicitor or nothing? No, you just... They've had your money, so you go and ask for some of theirs. They won't go into shock or anything. No. But they'll, like, go into everything, won't they? How do you mean? 
Well, I mean, they're not just going to give you 10,000 for being a nice fella, are they? Ah, well, no, they want to know if you're making a steady wage, you know, if you've got a steady job. I think that's about it, though. They just want to make sure you can make the payments. Well, that's it. Yeah. Oh, ta. Right, I'll see you. Bye. Right. <coughs> Course, you know why I was asking, don't you? Well, now you mention it, I... Oh, I didn't mention it, and neither did he, but that's what he meant. He's frightened they might find out who's been inside. Oh, I don't think they go that deep into your background. No, I know Ray used to be funny about it. He was terrified it might get dragged up, even after years and years. You know, he wouldn't even get anything on the HP because he was frightened they might investigate you. Oh, I he'll be all right. Anyway, let's be fair. He's doing very well, isn't he? I mean, things are going right for him at last. Well, thanks very much, anyway. Yes, it's something. Thank you, sister, but I mustn't keep you. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Well, she's no better, but at least she's no worse. She's got no feeling down one side, but sister said she's more herself today. Oh, well, that's better news, isn't it? Yeah. I've rung Maggie, and she said I can have the van to go up there. She's been really good, you know. You don't have to come, love. I don't mind. No, it's better if it's only me. I mean, I know me mum. She wouldn't like anybody saying the way she is. She can't talk to you anyway. Well, not really. Right, well, uh, tell her I hope she's feeling better and give her my regards. And uh, when you come back, I'll have some houses for you to look at. Hi. Are you ready for a pie or something? I'll have sassed me if I'm gone for half an hour. I said I would. If you don't mind, Ken. I've uh, got to go down to the refrigeration place. Freezer's clean up. All I'm getting is the answering machine. Oh, well, I mean, if it's a dire emergency. Yeah, it's very awkward, actually. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I, uh, I thought that was very good. You know, that article in the What's It about the disco. Thank you. Yes, I thought it was uh, very good. Mind you, I could give you one or two names of people who wouldn't think that way. I suppose you know that. Well, it's hard to please everybody, and hardest of all to please yourself. Or any walker. If I was you, I'd keep a very low profile in those regions. It'll only be 20 minutes, it's not far. And then you can take me to the Flying Horse. No, I prefer the Rovers. You heard what Alf said, and he's right. Let's go to the Flying Horse. No, I'm going to the Rovers. Well, you can go on your own then. I just want a quiet dinner. Well, we're probably deluding ourselves, you know. It's all something and nothing. Something to me and nothing to the rest of the world. Hey, she's still going on about that article in the recorder. I've never seen this esteemed up for a long time. Yeah, well, she's not the only one. Is that the old street down us, Ken Barlow? Sold us out, he has. Kearney sense will keep out of here. <laughs> if he's got the brass neck to come through that door, Betty, he'll get a right mouthful from me, I'm telling oh, you. Oh, dear. Hey, you ought to have heard what she called him. Who? Ken. What? Oh, I don't repeat it. I don't. Oh, no. Go on, whisper. <laughs> Potato pies to take out, Betty. Oh, hot or cold? Yeah, hot, sir. Okay. Hey, uh, what's the word, Eddie? How's the old lady? Oh, not too good. Marion's up there at the hospital now. Mind you, it could have been a lot worse, you know. What's this? Somebody calling? Yeah, Marion's mum. Uh, she's in hospital. She's had a bit of a stroke, you know. Oh, tough. Well, I'm sorry. Oh, and you just back off your honeymoon. Of course, that could be it, you know, sort of bringing it on with all the excitement and getting worked up over the wedding and everything. No, I don't reckon for a minute, Chuck. These things just happen. There you are, my love. Thank Sorry. you. You're not stopping for one, then, kid? No, no, I only came for the dance. Are you daft for what? Why am I asking? I only made an observation, that's all. Oh, I know, one calculated to make him feel a lot better. Yes, I know, but I mean, it could be true, couldn't it? Or it might not be necessary. Just don't just... go say things like that to Marion. Who with a kid and all. You want your head tested. <laughs> hey, you just missed your mate, Eddie. He's just come through the door. Ah, well, he did see me, didn't let on. He's got a lot on his mind. Ah, well, he only came back from his honeymoon yesterday. He hasn't been around to see me yet. You know, it's amazing. You can drink with a fellow, work with a fellow for years, and suddenly a woman comes along, finished, kaput. I've seen it before. Any ropes? Fancy a game of others? Oh, no, the crack cellar shouldn't have any... Uh, uh, certainly was exercise. You can throw it? I don't care. That's all right. It's walking back and forwards to the boys, that's the trouble. So help me, Stanley, you must be the only fellow I know that needs a runner to play darts. So she rang. So she's taking a load of stuff to the laundrette, then she's going back to the house, picking up some clean stuff and her man's best dressing and that sort of thing. So that should take her the best part of the afternoon. And how was she? Mm, didn't seem much different. But she has asked for a new dressing gown. 
Now, she can't get out of bed, she can't walk, but that's what she wants. So that seems as if it's promising to me. Else, do you think it was us getting married? What ever put that idea in yet? Well, you know, sort of shock to the system, like. I mean, there were one or two surprises, weren't there? Look, whatever gave you that idea, just you forget it. People went around thinking about things like that, we'd all go mad. Lots of people do things to their parents. We all do it. I did it to mine. Mine did it to me. But you've done out to Marion's mum. Yeah, I know that, but... Well, the kid and all that, you know. Look, all you have to think about now is the effect on Marion and your kid. Look, I mean, look what she's doing now. She's humping laundry all round Berry, worrying herself stiff. She wants a bit of looking after. Well, I'm doing my best. Hmm. Well, with some people, the best isn't good enough. You're not one of them. Go on, stop worrying me, your pie, will you? Enjoy the pies, lads. Not much. Tough. No skin off my nose. Oh, we were discussing what was in him. That's one possibility ruled out, then. You know, if your mate here was funny, you'd make a living as a comic. Well, I made a start, found a stew. Oh. Oh, oh, Hey, save a slice of him for me later. Kenneth, how nice to see you. What will be your pleasure? Uh, just a half, thanks. Will you not be lunching? Maybe, later. Good man. Good man? Oh, so, well, I've a good man to speak to him. Mavis, please. You know what happens when you open your gob. There you are. Thank you. Ta. Judas. Pardon me? She never will. She's dead upset with you, Ken. Judas, that's what Mrs. Walker reckons you are. Ah, my piece in the recorder. What else? Not what we expected, Ken. Well, absolutely not. Well, am I to be banned then? Is that it? Proscribed from the Rovers? Betty? Right, love. Never doubt now, do something like that, were it? Oh, give over. But she did call you that name. I know. I was one who was all for the graffiti club. But I've certainly changed my tune since it opened. We expected you to have a real go at them, Ken. And what do we get? New life in the area. Well, you want to be in our bedroom at two o'clock in the morning, mate. There's new life, all right. New noise as well. Yeah, well, my bedroom's not all that far away, either. You want to try mine, mate? And there's nothing in there about vandalism, is there? Do sneak outside there, have a look at my car aerial. Go on, have a look at it. Yeah, you did mention it, Fred. Oh, I mentioned it. I know I did, but you didn't, did you? Just a waste of breath. And there's that crack window. Mrs. Walker thought you'd mention that. Well, if we do a piece on vandalism, no doubt we will. This was about a disco. <laughs> Same thing. I'm afraid it's not. You don't know who bent your aerial, and it's not the first that was ever bent round here, and we don't know who broke that window, either. It definitely attracts an element, Ken, it does. There you are, you see, she knows. You're not often on Rosamond Street in the small hours, maybe, so are you? Oh, I don't have to be, because I, I know for a fact that Elsa Tanner got jostled coming past the place the other evening, and suggested comments as well. Mm. It definitely attracts an element. The police say there has been no trouble associated with the graffiti club. I know because I've asked them. Oh, aye. Do we have to wait until somebody's murdered, Ken? I don't suppose you'll report that, either, will you? Frightened you'll offend some newfound friends in high places, eh? You led us to believe that you were going to write an article about the effects on the neighbourhood. Well, we haven't got it, have we? Oh, it's just sucking up, in it? Look, why don't you write to John Statham and complain? It's sucking up to them with brass, like the dapper Denim Dynamo. Get it, right? The debonair Dynamo of Denim. Word for word. Yeah, I know. Because I've been practising it all morning with my tongue in my cheek. Very difficult. I can do it and drink at the same time. Oh, I see you've got the article there. Excellent, excellent. At least I thought it was. Here. Take the wife out tonight. There'll be a bottle of wine there for you. And that's not where I'd like to stick them. Oh. Thanks, all the same. <laughs> Hello, he's promised faithful he'll come this afternoon. Thanks for stopping, love. He can get off home now, if you like. Ah, it's all right. I'm waiting for his nibs. Oh, his nibs is here now. Oh, ah, yeah. Hello. Right, we off to the flying horse, then. Or do you still insist on going to the Rovers? Been to the Rovers. Oh, how was it? Oh, cannon to the right, cannon to the left. Do you know, you're the second one that's been in here today, quoting that. That's well, the thing about great writing, Al. People remember it. You, uh don't fancy a night out at the graffiti club, do you? Not particularly. Why? Oh, well, we were offered a couple of complimentaries. Was Mike Baldwin there? Uh -huh. Was that his way of returning the compliments you paid him? Yeah, they weren't lost on him. Irony might be lost on others, but not on him. Anyway, I returned the tickets in a 
not particularly complimentary way. You want to take all the perks you can get, old son. That's the way the world works. Oh, that's when you know you're a donkey off, when you start eating the sugar lumps. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I must have eaten something that disagreed with me. What have you been putting in these pies, eh? Don't blame our pies, mate. There's no one with our pies. He's just had one. He's not dying. I think you might be right. It's been getting at me, you know, just here. Probably your missus trying to poison you. Not without time and all. <laughs> Don't be trying to worry me, Fred, because I wouldn't put it past her. Powdered glass in your tater that shade. Very slow, very painful. Can't kill nobody with powdered glass. Give over. It's been done before, mate. Oh, no, no. So it's a popular misconception, is that? You try doing away with someone with powdered glass, you'll be waiting a long time for a funeral. Mm. Oh, you know something about this business, do you? Right, you've got your four kinds of poison. Oh, aye. Right. You've got your narcotic, convulsant, irritant and corrosive. Does he know it all, then? Well, it's only an interest, you know. Hey, come to think of it, I felt all right till you started painting this pub. <laughs> Used to be a lot of poisons in paint. Lead, arsenic, all sorts. Arsenic? What did they put arsenic in paint for? Well, used to make a lovely green arsenic. Best thing they had in those days. Napoleon had it on wall, and he were like you. Thought he had indigestion. Ah, oh, well, you're like giving me indigestion. Come on, let's be having you, Jack. Let's be closing. <laughs> ah, indigestion. <laughs> nice thing about our licensing laws, Fred. Give me time to sober up before the wife comes home from work. I like it, Jack. Yeah. See you, mate. <laughs> hey, I hope he's not driving that taxi home, em. Huh? Uh, where's Lynchy? Wouldn't you guess? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, there you are, Lynch. We're, uh, we're having a connection through there for you. For these and the by the sink. Yes, well, I'm coming. But just for now, you're going. All right, Fred, come. Oh. All right. Well, that's about it. She wants me to go back to her. So? What's she going to do? I don't know. Well, while you're making your mind up about it, just leave me out of it. Because it's no to do with me, Des. Are you sure? Too right, I'm sure. No, I was just asking your advice. As somebody who knows me. As somebody who knows you. She should be asking for my advice. Cos I'll tell you this, Des. I'd not like to be the woman you're supposed to come home to. Be fair, Bet. I don't play around. No. It's just an unfortunate impression you give. Like the time you were leaving your wife for me. Only we both found out about this woman in Connaught Road. How is she, by the way? Oh, no, that was a load of rubbish, that. There wasn't anybody in Connaught Road. Well, apart from anything else that was in Leinster Avenue. Then it was just somebody that I'm very fond of. You're very fond of us all, aren't you, Des? Yeah. Hopeless. Look, don't ask me for advice about going back to your wife. In fact, don't ask me for anything. And I won't ask you for anything. Except to laugh now and again, which is about all you're good for. Hiya. Hey, didn't he come through? You look whack. Come on, you've been doing too much now. You sit down and I'll go and put the kettle on. We'll have a brew. Yeah, smashing. Hey, and I've been round the agents and uh, there's one or two houses I think are worth looking at. Not only that, I've done the sums. Frightening it is, but I think we're there. Eddie, please, love. What's to do? It's not your mum. I, th I thought she was no, doing all right. No, the same as she was. Oh, for a moment. I, I thought... talked to the doctor about her coming out. And they said, well, they'd like to get them out as soon as possible because it seems to be the best thing. Oh, well, they know best, don't they? Only when she comes out, she won't be able to look after herself. Well, of course she won't. I'm sorry, Eddie. It's not your fault. Nothing's your fault. We'll cope. We'll manage. <laughs> Does the date on that paper signify out to you, Stan? 28th November. Hmm. Should I? Blackout, rain drizzling down, a sack of spuds with legs on, snoring in the co-op doorway down Rosamond Street, me coming along and falling flat on my face over them. The legs, I mean. No, it'd be first met. Exactly. <laughs> and do you know how long it is since the night we first met? No. 40 years. 28th of November, 1943. Get away. And a week later, we were married, weren't we? We were. I wasn't for waiting. <laughs> so what does that make next Monday? I've no idea. It's us, Ruby, wedding. Ruby? 
How many is that? Well, I've just said 40. We haven't done bad, you and me, have we? No, oh, well, at least we stuck together, I suppose. Better than some folk. Very true. Mm. 40 <laughs> years. <laughs> that should be in the Guinness Book of Records, you know. <laughs> it should. 40 flipping years. <laughs> What do you mean, is that it? Well, it's, it's done, isn't it? Forty years wed, and that's all you've got to say about it? Well, it is it's done. We're going to mark it, Stan. Because, like you said, it is somewhat of a minor miracle. Now, first thing we're going to do is get a new carpet for in here, and the second thing, we're going to look into having holiday, preferably abroad. That's going to cost money. Well, I've got me inheritance, haven't I? So you just brace yourself for spending a bit of brass on somewhat besides ale. Ayak, uh, I'm not letting 40 years slip by unsung. I've had precious little to sing about so far. Morning. Morning. You know, there's one thing about having Eddie living in the house. You don't have to go rushing about like scared cats. What time does he get up in the morning? Six. Well, he's going to be in work by half past. Oh, aye. And you're going to be getting up with him, are you? Well, I can't lie in bed and let him make his own breakfast, can I? Oh, no, of course you can't. Not for the first few weeks, at least. You're a cynical woman, Elsie, Tanner. <sighs> no, love, just an experienced one, that's all. <laughs> Sorry, mate, checking up on me, are No, oh, he's never very far away, is he? What a perfect domestic picture. The two women in my life sitting quietly nothing. I never realised I was part of your domestic setup, Mr Yates. Well, I'll tell you what else. You can be me, uh, me ma or me grandma. Ah, uh, just you watch it and kind of remember you're only the lodger here. No, uh, what I popped in for was uh, there's a nice little semi for sale down there, uh, Mayor Avenue, the back of the Red Wreck. Passed it this morning. It looks very cosy and well maintained, so there wouldn't be much decorating to do. Oh, thanks very much. So I thought we could uh, pop round and have a deco. Yeah, we will. When? Oh, sometime we'll see. Right. Just thought I'd report. Eh, uh, no, I won't have a bacon bussy and a cup of tea while I'm here. Nobody was going to ask you to have one. Were they, Mary? No. Men must graft, and women must sit supping tea. It was ever thus. I'll see you. It's all right, You might have shown a bit more interest in his little house. How can I be interested in anything with my mother still so ill? Well, she's getting better, isn't she? Yeah, but not very fast, I'll see. Not very fast at all. <laughs> Hello there, darling. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? I know, you were in the graffiti last night, body popping. <laughs> You're only making yourself look ridiculous. You know that, don't you? Mavis, the trouble with you is, fellas have moved on. You haven't. Well, I'm not exactly a horsehair Sophie, you know. No, what I mean is, fellas are not the tongue-tied, spotty youth that you used to know in... Where were it? Grange. Grange. Nowadays, it's all your quick-fire repartee you've got to give as good as you get. Otherwise, they think you are a horse or a sofa. Look, I'm just trying to give you a few lessons. Ginger you up a bit for Christmas. I don't want gingering up for Christmas. I'm not a goose, you know. I can have a perfectly good Christmas all on my own. Eating well and watching the telly, listening to music and... Going to church. You'll burst out crying in a minute. I'm not going to burst out crying. Morning, ladies. Morning, Mr. Summer. Has it come? The Cajun Avery? Uh, yes, yes. Oh, good. Oh, I'm lost without the Cajun Avery. Best read of the week. Give me an article, a good one on budgies, and you can keep your page threes. This country doesn't go to work on an egg, you know. It goes to work on a. Well, you know what I mean. There's not many of them to a pound. Ta da. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Sugden. Yes. Uh, I take it you're a bird fancier, the feathered kind, naturally. I've kept budgies, man and boy, for 50 years. Except when I was serving the country. What a coincidence. Mavis here is very interested in budgies. As a matter of fact, she's got one upstairs in her flat, haven't you, Mavis? Yes. Yes, well, I have. Fancy that. Birds of a feather. <laughs> I hear your pardon the expression. A fellow fancier. Well, I, I wouldn't say I was really a fancier. What sort is it? Just a budgie. No, I mean colour. What colour is it? Oh, green. Oh, so is the one I've got at present. Oh. Sex. Female. Male. Yet another coincidence. I'd like to see her sometime, your bird. Yes, yes, you must. Oh, by the way, Randy. Pardon? 
That's what he's called, my budgie. Oh, and Harriet. Oh. Fra. Oh. Harriet and Randy. Oh. I could kill you, Rita. Why? I'm telling him all about Harriet. I mean, he could easily become a nuisance. You know what he was like with Emily. Listen, anything's better than watching telly at Christmas, even Percy. Rita, he's an old age pensioner. Well, you haven't got long to go. Oh. I mean, I've heard of come up and see my etchings, but come up and see my budgie. Now that is original. Ah, so we strangle that monkey, I will. Oh, shut up, Fred. Hilda's got something to sing about today, haven't you, love? Yeah. Oh, aye. Is there Stanley running off with a lady wrestler? Oh, Hilda met Stan 40 years ago this very day, that's all. Oh, I wondered why the flags were at half mast. Ignoring <laughs> Hilda. Oh, he'll not upset me today, no danger. So, uh, if it hadn't been for the blackout, I mean, you and Stan might never have clapped eyes on one another, if, if you see what I mean. You mean, if there'd been a light shining, I'd have stepped over his legs and walked on, yeah, I would. <laughs> Fine, like that little fella's got a lot of times for that, hasn't Oh, oh I don't know. We've had us good times and bad times, you know, but we've had us moments, me and Stan. Oh, I wish you could have seen him in them days. Coming through that station barrier on leave, neat as a pin in his uniform, and that handsome. Folk used to stare at him. But it were me walked up to. <clears throat> it's uh, it's your Ruby wedding anniversary next week, is it, Hilda? Then? Yeah, that's right. Oh. Are you having a do, love? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> hey, <-oh. laughs> <coughs> Rob's return? Bet here. Who? Oh, yeah, she is. Hilda, for you. For me? Who oh, is it? A woman. She says her name's Mrs. Stanley Ogden. <laughs> oh, I'll murder you, Bet. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Ogden speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Cooper. Oh, I am pleased you were able to get it. Yes, well, whenever it's convenient. Oh, it's convenient to me any time. Hmm. Pardon? Oh, yes, oh, cash on the nail. That's always been my policy. Hmm. Right, you let me know when you're coming, then. <laughs> Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> Ah, that's one thing done and dusted. My new carpet. Next thing on the agenda is holiday. Do you know what they say? It's lovely at not end at this time of year. Mm. Oh, it'll be somewhere expensive and romantic, don't you fret? Somewhere like, uh, like Benidorm. <laughs> you can't get a 62 bus there, Hilda. It's foreign. You need passports and that. Oh, I know what I have to do, Fred. I'm not sick. Anyway, come on, get hold of this. Hey, eh? What's this, then? Well, it's worth a celebration, isn't it? Let's Thank face you. it, anybody that's been married to Oggy for 40 okay. years deserves a disability pension, never mind a drink. And listen, I know Mrs Walker will want us to push the boat out while mm. she's at their journey, so uh, a little toast to Wilda. For valour and courage far and above the call of duty. <laughs> oh, to Wilda and Stan. <laughs> God bless you both. Oh, thanks very much. I, I'll return the compliment this evening. This is only the first of today's Ooh, celebrations. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, this is her best sherry. Betty, sup up. And shut up. <laughs> Morning, gorgeous. How's my pin-up girl today? Fine, thanks, Jack. How are you? Not you. I'm right off red yesterday. Maeve. If I weren't such an happily married fella, Maeve, me and you could light a fire or two. Oh, you're just saying that. I'm not. I mean it. 26, please. Bet your life is one big rave up in it, eh? With you being single and that. I wouldn't say that, no. Come on, who are you trying to kid? See you, sexy. See? Yeah, I've got one fan at least. Are you never going to speak to me again? No. You just did. See? You just did. Yes, folks. Have you got last night's paper? Yeah, I think so. It's the one with the special house for sale section in it, isn't it? Oh, definitely. And there's no extra charge. Thinking of yeah. doing a bit of nest building, are we? Uh, more like barn building, knowing the size of me. Not to mention the size of air in the not-too-distant future. <laughs> Ain't he subtle? Part of his charm. Then there's his debonair good looks as well. Irresistible. You two having a go at me? As if. Oh, seriously, love, how's your mum? Well, better some days than others. I'm just on my way to see her now. Must be a worry for you. Yeah, it is. I'm cheering her up, though. I must have signed on the dotted line for six houses already. <laughs> <laughs> You're daft enough. Come on. <laughs> to tell love. See you. Ta -ra. Ta -ra. Do you know, they're a right nice couple, then. Yeah, a couple of years ago, I would have said Eddie Yates was a natural bachelor. So you see, maybe, that.
Hello, Mr. Sugden. Well, you're soon back. And what's that you've got with you? Food, you. Oh, you are pathetic. Just pathetic. And you spoke to me again. What have you been doing to yourself this morning then, Albert? Not much. Oh, that wouldn't do for me. I've got to keep busy. An achievement today keeps a doctor away. That's my motto. Is that so? Definitely. Oh, well, uh, I'll tell you one thing you can do this instant. What's that? Get another drinking. Oh, look at you two, don't you? Look smart. Ah, yeah. come, Stan, who got you ready? Oh, now then, you're only jealous cos we happen to be a lady and gentleman of leisure, and you lot of the working classes. Hey, Fred thinks that's a compliment, don't you, love? Now then, what can I get you? I'll wear a glass of bitter and a port and lather. Oh, right. A glass? I won't wear it. It's all the glass. Listen, I told you, we're only having a quick one in here. Then we're uh, moving on into town, you see. Got things to do, you know. Mm. I heard you were celebrating. Oh, yeah, they're going to the Bahamas, aren't you, Hilda? <laughs> oh, well, I wouldn't exactly say that. No, we're definitely going somewhere, though. In fact, we're going to get Stan a birth certificate this afternoon so as he can get a passport, you see. I've already got mine, of course, from when I was cruising. Birth certificate? How can Stan get a birth certificate? He wasn't born, was he? Ha, ha, ha. I wish I was coming with you, Stan. You're very welcome, love. Oh, Stanley. <laughs> That's 82 pence, please, love. Sam. 82 pence, please. What pay us, Dan? OK. You'll have to strap up, Hilda, love, if you want to celebrate as well. Oh, you think so, do you, Brad? Mm. Well, now, do you know what this is? No, oh, well, you won't, will you? Probably never having seen one, let alone had one in your possession. <laughs> well, it's a cash card. Now, outside my bank, where I have my account, there's this little machine, you see. Now, I pop this in, tell it a secret number, known only to me, and then in ten seconds, I could buy you up, Fred. <laughs> Meanwhile, Betty, there's a ten-pound note to be going on with. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hi, go, Milda. When you start living, you certainly do it in style. Yeah, well, I've got a natural talent for it, Elsie, given half a chance. <laughs> now, come on, Stan, sup up. We don't want to waste too much time, in it. Right, well, go on. Marvellous invention, isn't it? <laughs> Put your card in the wrong way around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Please insert your personal number. Right, Stanley, turn your head away. Incorrect personal number. Please wait. They made them up for that, didn't you? They gave them the wrong secret number. Well, it's an easy mistake. I'll try again. Oh, flipping heck. Women never can handle machines. Talk about women driving. Sure up. It'll gobble me card up if I get it wrong again. Now, let's see. It's a uh, number of our house backwards. That's three, one. And what year with the coronation? Your secret number is five, three, three, one. That's it. How did you know? You're you talking to sleep. <laughs> I've got it changed. Five, three, three, and one. One. Oh, select service you require. Blue keys. Ah, withdraw cash. Display cash. balance. Yes, cash, please. Oh, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Enter amount, then press proceed key. 100 sackers. 50. Oh, where is it? Go in the bank for it. Oh, don't be so daft. Oh, I know. I forgot to press proceed. Get off. Now we got the money. Where are we going? Hey, the slum. We're going to get you that birth certificate. 
us all day for sucking in. Go on. There you are. Quarter of Uncle Joe's. Hope they're not all stuck together. If they are, complain to Uncle Joe, 30p. No drop for pensions. I've put you an extra one in. Oh, the stingy thing. I hope your Uncle Joe's have stuck together. Hey, you're about to have a visitor. Just been on the blower. If you don't speak to me, I shan't tell you who it is. Well, who is it? Passionate Percy, the Birdman of Coronation Street. Coming over to see your Harriet. You never give up, do you? It's true. Honest engine. He'll be on his way now. Oh, I'd better go and tidy up then. I wish I'd had more notice. Tidy up? It's like a show house up there. Yes, but I've got to go and clean out Harriet's cage, haven't I? I mean, she's a very untidy bird when she's that way out. Really? Well, get up there then. Hey, and think on. What? Don't keep Percy up there all night. We don't want Harriet corrupting. Yes, love, what can I do for you? Oh, it's you. <laughs> oh, hello, Eddie. Nice to see you. Sure, up, I'm counting. Well, have you done a bank job with Stan's having the getaway care? <laughs> oh, it's been a lovely day, Eddie. Do you know I've had three Thornton lemons? <laughs> hey, you haven't won the pools, have you? No. It's 40 years today since we met, me and Stan. It never is. It is. He was drunk, wasn't he? He is now. Well, he's sleeping it off. Well, congratulations, and may you have 40 more together. I thought you was a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've just called in to pick a few bits and pieces up. Accumulated over three very happy years in your humble abode. He not so much of the humble. Get a fitted carpet down in here, be like a palace. Hey, I've got to make the carpets, right? No. What's this? Holiday brochures? Oh, yeah, I was thinking of having holiday, but we can't decide where. It's very difficult, you know, when the world's your oyster. Yeah, it must be. Mm. We're all ready, though. Money, passports. Well, that's Stan's passport form there. Hey, this is birth certificate, isn't it? Oh, yeah, he had to get a new one this afternoon. <clears throat> How old is Stan? 61. Well, that's what I thought, but not according to this. You are? Born 1919. That makes him 64. Never give it to you. Hey, you're right, you know. Here, wake up, Methuselah. Uh, well, what's that? What's up? How old are you? Uh, uh, 61. <laughs> not according to this legal documentation, you're not, yeah. Stanley. Born 1919. That makes you 64, mate. Rubbish. Well, that's what it says on your birthday certificate, Luke. <clears throat> Will you still need this. me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Not so sure I will. I don't like older men. <laughs> <laughs> no, how could that have happened? I'm 61. Trust me, Dad was a bit daft. Runs in the family, does it? Might have given information to the long clerk, you know. You sure it wasn't to you? Oh, we'll have to get that sorted, though, won't hey, we? Hey, there are advantages to being 64, Hilda. Such as? Well, uh, you'll be able to get the pension next year. Had a 65. And a free bus pass, you'd be able to retire, Stanley. Oh, what a day it's turning out, eh? <laughs> hey, hang on, Hilda. What? There is one snag. What? Well, if Stanley gave the wrong information when he got married, you might not be married. I'm having a ruby wedding next week, whether he's 64 or 94. I've earned it. Come in, Mr. Sugden. Please, the name's Percy. Oh, nice flat, very cosy. Oh, thank you. Well, I've been here for six years now, so I've put down roots, so to speak. Uh, not like me. I found it difficult to settle since my army days. All that roaming around the world, I suppose. Well, it must have been very interesting, though. Oh, the stories I could tell. Oh, dear, I made a mate in air curl. Really? <laughs> yeah. uh, this is Harriet over here. What a lovely bird. Oh, do you think so? Oh, she's a belter. Well, I like her. I think she likes me. <laughs> good condition, ideal length, good round head, steady on her perch. Have you ever thought of exhibiting her? No, never. Well, you should. How about mating? No. They've got a computer mating service for budgery guards now, you know. Have they? Still, you've no use for him. Not with my Randy being on doorstep and raring to go. Hello. The time Elsie was in. You sound like a mother. She's keeping very late hours. <laughs> you tough thing. <laughs> hey, I'm not missing me nights on the tiles, you know. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. No, I like this domestic bit. I feel fitter. I can see better, too. See? 
Yeah. There were times when my eyes were nearly shut through lack of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it'd be even better when we got our own house. Looking forward to that. Locking them doors, shutting out the rest of the world. Just you and me. I'm the nipper. Never had much privacy in my life. Except inside a cell. Eddie? Yeah? The doctor said my mum might be home soon. Oh, great. Hey, we'll have a welcome home Winnie party for her. Yeah, but how's she gonna manage? Oh, she'll be all right. She's got Uncle Will for the district nurses, and we'll pop up once a week on the dust cart. Yeah, but I can't leave it to cough on her own, Eddie. What else can we do? I'll have to look after her. What, you mean have a living with us when we get our house? Oh, no, I shall not leave Berry. I'll have to go and live there. Well, just until she gets on her feet, that is. Live there? Yes. Well, that means me and all. What about our house, our plans? Well, it won't be that many weeks, Eddie. Well, supposing it isn't just a couple of weeks. Supposing it's months, years. Well, what else can I do? She is my mother. Right, it's only right clear in the room. I'm not having folk come into this house the same as shiftless. He didn't know this, you know. Woody Ecker's like, he'd be straight back to the shop. They had their ways. Listen, it's a carpet fitter we got coming, not a flipping magician. Hmm. And here, don't go settling down for a snooze. You can get busy with the brush. Man of my age, that's to take it steady. Never mind a man of your age. You're still the same fella you were last week, whatever it says on your birth certificate. No, I'm not. What can't speak can't lie. Last week I was 61. This week I'm 64. Hmm. Flipping misprint if you ask me. Mm, I think it was the air age, you know. They're all putting computers, these records, aren't they? It'll have gone up the wall. Whether or not, as long as I retire, I get retire early, <laughs> I'm not arguing. Aye. Well. Might be worthwhile sending for mine. Maybe I can get a few years stuck on. Then we both be on as pensions <laughs> by next spring. <laughs> <laughs> He's busy. Hey, sorry, I bother you. I don't want to be a pest. I just wanted a loan of a, a window lever. Put a shiny well, bolt in. Here, you want your levers. You've got a window round, remember? Hey, you can have it jaffing back in there, Jeffy. Ah, oh, well, see you do. Oh, don't forget, Stan. I want this place swept up for the carpet, fella. You know I've done me back. Listen, what about my back? Do you think it's made of iron or something? I can give you ten years, big girl. Oh. Hey, well, seeing as you're uh, kind of up to your eyes... Hey, Stan, hang on a second. Do you remember anything about the uh, air raids during the war? A bit. Do you remember the night that the, 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 the births and deaths place was blitzed? Can't say as I do. I bet that was it. Is that you, kid? It's me. At least the bog eyes heard from me. Huh? How are you feeling? Oh. Not the baby, is it? Oh, no, I feel fine myself. Just this business with my mum. I thought she was over the worst of it. Well, yeah, she's due out of hospital any time. I see who's going to look after her when she does come out. I see. Well, I mean, we can't pay anybody else. You know, the national health people can only do so much nowadays. Maybe a long job, is it? Well, it looks that way. So what are you going to do? I haven't got much choice, really. I'll have to go back until she can cope. What does Eddie think about it? Well, he's not tickled pink, I can tell you that. Doesn't fancy Berry, doesn't fancy living with his mother-in-law. We're up half the night, hardly a toss. Ah, oh, so nothing's decided. I'll have to go back, Elsie. What else is there for me to do? <sighs> well, I suppose so. Blood's thicker than water. Yeah, it damn well is, isn't it? I mean, I can see at his point of view, and actually speaking, I don't owe my mother anything. She's been as hard as nails with me in her time. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Morning, Blossom. How's it going? Blossom? I'll give you a blossom for crawling out at this time. Well, it saved me from getting under your feet, doesn't it, my precious? Look, quite honestly, Fred, I don't know how anybody could be as barefaced as you are. Oh, come on, give us a kiss. Get off. <laughs> Look, the minute a highness goes through that door, your character changes. We well, should give us a shout, shouldn't you? I've been screaming my head off. Well, my bedroom door's unlocked. You want to nick upstairs, whip back the bedclothes and tickle my toes with a feather. <laughs> You're joking. But I wear pyjamas, ask Mrs Walker. I'll be off now, Betty, love. Hey, Hilda. Okay, my love. Have you done your full two hours? Listen, Nosey, I'm talking to the organ grinder, not the monkey. <laughs> no, I've got a lot on my plate today, you see, Chuck. Got my new carpet coming. Oh, yes, she said. Red yeah. carpet day as opposed to red letter day. And I've got the arrangements to make for Stan's passport. Oh, Where well, is it you're going then, Hilda? Well, we haven't quite made up us minds. 
could be Tenerife, could be Majorca, could be somewhere in Italy. Mm. I've heard that Lanzarote is very nice. Mm. Oh, we want to go a bit further than Wales. <coughs> you don't think she's a bit of a flirt on quiet, do you? No, of course not. No. With a name like Harriet, she wouldn't be, would she? If Budgie's had Sunday school, she'd be there, wouldn't she? With a little prayer book and a little navy blue mac, little white ankle socks. Yes, if you want to put it that way. And how about Randy? Oh, if you're talking about Mr. Sugden's Budgie, I prefer the use of his full name, which is Randolph. Oh, Randolph, is it? I thought it was his nickname. Something to do with his social habits, <laughs> like. Better hadn't be. Well, how about Randolph? Is he coming to call? Is he suitable? I haven't seen him. And what's more important, neither is Harriet. Not one of these street corner budgies, is he? You know, hanging around billiard holes, causing aggro at football matches. According to Mr. Sultan, his breeding was impeccable. Well, they reckon Bluebeard were the apple of his father's eye, you know. Look, it's all right, you joking, Rita, but I've got a living creature in my care, and the question I have to ask myself is whether she's ready yet for motherhood whether she's ready and whether Randolph is, so to speak, her Mr. Wright. I mean, imagine how you would feel if you were forced into marriage with the wrong man against your wishes. Could be even worse if it were love at first sight and you said no, he's not chapel, or he picked his nose, he didn't like his politics. This Randolph, not communist, is he? You uh... Ready for a couple, Mr... Uh... Oh, go me, Harold. Oh, Harold. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you are. Oh, Tara. Mmm, lovely. Biscuit? Oh, thank you. Mmm, grand. You know, it just occurred to me, Mrs Ogden, this curious thing you was telling me about your husband's birth certificate. Could have happened at school. How do you mean? Well, it could have been kept back a class or two. Oh, I'm not saying like he was a dunce. Oh, no, I'm not saying he was a dunce. I'm just saying what he learned at school could be wrote on the head of a pin and still leave room for the Lord's Prayer. Look, I, I, I don't know Mr Ogden, so I'll take it you're joking. You're right, Harold. I'm joking. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same myself. Oh, for a laugh. Cracks I make about the missus. Pure musical. Like Mind the one you, that... just because you're a dunce at school doesn't mean to say you're thick, you know. Oh, no. Now, my stand might not be very hot on his sums, but you ask him to work out a perm for his coupon. <laughs> I have a brother like that. Now, he got kept back and my mum got right confused as to how old he were. Oh, yeah. Now, you could very well have the answer. I mean, it's no disgrace. They'd better be kept back, I reckon, than leaving school having learned notes. Oh, that's very true, yes. You know, in my opinion, there's not enough get kept back. I mean... You meet some right clowns in this job. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Mm. You know, let's tell them, you've got to fit their carpet, you know, round about this stage. They come in and they say, hey, I never ordered this colour. Get away. <laughs> Honest, <laughs> you wouldn't believe how many fall for it. Mm. <laughs> and then, when you say, but this is Thunderfelt, they say, oh, I wanted Axminster. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, then. Oh, boy. Uh, Sam, this is Harold. He's fitting the carpet. Oh, very nice, Harold. I thought it was going to be red. Anybody home? I'm in here. Are we eating in, or are we going to go out and grab a quick plowman's and a bevy? What's up? I didn't feel like work, so I rang and told them I was ill. You don't look well. Why oh, didn't you give me a ring? I've only been messing about at the tip. I could have been home half an hour ago. Oh, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not ill. It's not my condition. Well, come and sit down. I'll make you a cup of tea. I bet you've had nothing all morning, have you? I'm off for food anyway. Yeah, but he isn't, though, is he? Marmaged you. Eddie, you're very sweet and I appreciate it. Look, I know you're worried about your mam. I'm worried sick. OK. But you've got to remember the fact is you're having a baby. And you need all your strength, like my old Irish granny used to say. There's no strength without nourishment. Your mum will be all right. She'll be well looked after. And we'll pop up at weekends. There'll be doctors and district nurses and social workers all buzzing round like bees. 
Look, like they say, leave it to the professionals, eh? Wouldn't that be a bit selfish, relying on them? I mean, considering the work they've got to do, caring about people who've got nobody. Look, Marion, I don't want to sound hard. But I think you're overreacting. Well, I don't think I am. And there is the practical side, you know. OK, we want a house, but we haven't actually got one, have we? Well, give me time. Yes, but staying with my mother would give us time. I mean, we'd have more privacy than we've got here with Elsie over us. I mean, my mother's house has got three bedrooms. It's got quite a big garden. You could have no jobs, though, would we? Our jobs are here, not in Berry. It's not Timbuktu, love. That's a few miles away. I mean, what time would I have to get up in the morning? And the cost of bus fares? And petrol if I had a jam jar? Yeah, but it wouldn't be forever. And what about you at the flower shop? Well, I'll have to leave soon, anyway. And then there's me round. What's going to happen to that? Stan can't manage. Yeah, but if he's retiring in six months' time... Look, Marion, the point I'm making is that I've got people depending on me. Look, love, I don't want to ban it, but as Elsie said, blood's thicker than water. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, don't tell me, because I think I can guess. It means if it comes to a choice between me and your mother, you're going to beg her off to Berry and leave me as a weekend it's husband. It's not like that, and you know it. I mean, my mother, for all I go on with her, she's not Genghis Khan, she's a poor old woman who was ill. And, Eddie, she's part of the family, our family. Whatever she is, she's got us having our first row, hasn't she? Oh, come on, love, if it's your job you're worrying about, surely you're going to get a transfer. Yeah, I could ask for the moon and all. <laughs> Kid, I didn't know you were in. Um, could I have a word, please? I mean, if you've finished your lunch. Sure, come and sit down. Well, would you like to come into my room? Because I've got the fire on and things. Well, no, not really. I can't get settled because I haven't got much time. The nearer it gets to Christmas, the more Mike Bowen gets like flaming Scrooge. Come on, come and sit down. If you feel like pouring out your troubles, don't be shy. Have you spoken to Eddie yet? We had a row and he stormed out. Oh, that's mother-in-law-itis, that is. They should all band together and march on Les Dawson, mother-in-laws. He'll be round with a bunch of flowers in his hot little hand. Yeah, well, I hope he goes to our shop and gets discount. I hope he's got that much sense. Ah, well, well, whether or not, when he cools down, he'll sort it out, you see. Yeah, well, that depends, doesn't it? On what? Well, on his job, really, whether he can get a transfer to Bury or not. No better news than your mother, then? Oh, yeah, good news, really. I ran the hospital this morning. They said she's due out any time. She's going to need care. This transfer, has Eddie applied for it yet? Says there's no chance. Oh, go on. With the grounds that he's got. If I was him, I'd be down that yard and have him weeping buckets, all of them, I'll tell you. Yeah, but I suppose it can't be that easy, Elsie. Oh, go on. With the gift of the gabby he's got, he'll swing it. Oh, good. I hope he hasn't done a bunk. No way, kids. He's done it before, Elsie, when things got on top of him. I mean, I went to, to Liverpool to find him. Oh, come on now, buck up, come on. I tell you, I'll be down in that council yard and you'll be talking to the depot manager, whoever it is he has to talk to. Oh, that flew at him, Elsie. I mean, I bottle things up, all oh, sweetness and light, and then something snaps into me and I just fly at people. Shh, come on. Bye, Eki, you've got a lovely pair of tonsils. Give us 26, please, love. So, Matt, was you on the Raz last night? Oh, aye, dancing in the moonlight till all hours. Gets boring, though, night after night. Love is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Do you know I've been in love with the same woman for the past 25 years? I know, and if the wife finds out, she'll kill you. Listen, I have been on the go since half past six this morning. I had to pack Len off, then come in here, start doing the papers. Morning, Mrs. Fairclough. Uh, Miss Riley in? Afraid not, on her lunch. Oh, well, if I can just nip upstairs, then. Sorry, dining out. Oh, I see. Fair enough. Only thing was, I thought we had an arrangement. Well, um, she's got cold feet, Mr. Sugden. But she promised last time we spoke, she promised we could have a sort of get-together, you know, a, a, a right bit of proper courting. Uh, so I believe. And now I reckon in these matters you're best off taking time by the hero. It's an age thing, you see. I mean, in mating and breeding, age is very important. When you get to a certain age, you can't hang about. You cover your ears up. Courtship begun, compatibility established. The sooner you start operations, the better. 
No danger. Yes, so if I could just go upstairs and leave them alone uh, together. Well, I don't know about that, Mr. Sugden. As I said, Mavis has been having misgivings. Are you waiting for summer? No, I'm just enjoying the floor show. I mean, me being a budgie breeder from way back. Well, if that's the case, you know I'm talking sense. Oh, I know budgie breeders are ruthless men with only one idea in their head. The perfect budgie. So you give our little mate here access. He'll have the cage door open, little stood inside, whipping off his that, races. That's enough. On your bike. I feel for that bird, you know. Could be me in that cage. A magnificent thoroughbred. A rich woman's plaything. Out. I hope, Mrs. Fairclough, you're not going to take any notice of that sort of talk. I mean, if I went round pushing things, I'd want locking up. I mean, Randolph's no booze artist, you know. He's a shy, sensitive type. And if her up there starts any funny business, put him right off his stroke. It's been a blow, Bessie. Mm. It's kicked the house hunting into touch, and he's got Marion all on edge. Well, it's only to be expected, lovey. I mean, with the man being at death's door and all that sort of thing. She's not at death's door. Oh. She's getting better. She probably lives in a grand old age. Mm. Oh, I mean, have you met her? I mean, sympathy where sympathy's due. Mm. Well, I think it could be a little bit of your mam comes first stuff. Yeah, it could be, I suppose. Anyway, when I've supped this, I'm going down to see the big chief, see if I can get a transfer. Do you think you might, love it? Well, I'm working on my sub story, but I wouldn't lay odds. <laughs> Well, what puzzles me is how the story's got about. Well, it's got to me, Wave. It's not do with me. Well, you seem to be very well gendered up on it. I suppose everybody's been snickering about it, haven't they? Well, maybe it was Lynch that was coming out with them tales. Weren't you making all them cracks about, well, about you and Percy? Hot Curse, news, Mavis. Jack Duckworth this very minute has come from the cabin. He reckons Percy's there. All brill cream there and shiny tall Look, cap. Uh, Quite honestly, I don't find this very funny. If you're trying to make out that Percy's after mating with... Instead of making perfectly proper arrangements about the breeding of budgets, do you mean that he's at the cabin now? There but... to start what he calls operation positions. <sighs> Talking about stud fees, I always thought a stud was what you put in the back of your collar. Yeah. And I wouldn't let a daughter of mine marry a budgie like that. I've got <laughs> shifty eyes. <laughs> hey, then, Jane. No, I've got to be going, Stanley. But well, don't go to our house. You can't put your pair and feet down. <laughs> Give me the plant, love, will you? It's murder that place, I'll tell you. Don't put your feet there. Don't put your feet there. I mean, you've got to put your feet down somewhere, haven't you? Hey, you've had a visitor. So I understand from Jack Duckworth, and I hope to goodness you've not let him go upstairs and start what he chooses to call operations. Of course I haven't. Oh, thank goodness for that. I mean, the thought of him stuffing that awful bird in the same cage as Harriet. How do you know it's an awful bird? I've come to the conclusion that with a name like Randy, it can't be anything else. It's a perfectly nice little budgie. You can't keep Harriet in Perda forever, you know. And she did actually once lay an egg. Personally, I think you're being overprotective. I just don't think that she's ready yet for, well, for that sort of commitment. I think you're putting some of your ideas in Harriet's head. And I think that's a shame. Well, you can think what you like. Anyway, Randolph will be coming around later to pay his respects. Oh. Tell you something else. If it was Victor that was coming to call with his budgie, be a different story then, wouldn't it? Yes, love, what can I do for you? Sorry, mate. What's all this? Have I come to the right house? I suppose better take me well, he's off. <laughs> You're all right so long as you wiped them. I'll tell you what, Hilda, this is magic. It's like walking on here. I'm beautifully fitted, Eddie. Every corner cut to the inch. Oh, it pays to have them fitted, you know. None of this codging with tax. Now, when you get your new house, you want to have them fitted. New house? Well, that's a long way off. I thought you were looking. Well, knocked on the head now, Marion's mum's gone ill, hasn't it? We might have to move up to Berry and live with her. Oh, is that right? Oh, Ray, that's a bit of a shock, isn't it? I mean, well, moving next door was one thing. Yeah, well, it rattled me, I can tell you, Hilda. Me and Marion had a big barney over it. Well, not serious, I hope. Well, we weren't exactly chucking place, but I did get rattled a bit. Still, I mean, with her man not being well, Chuck. OK, but it's his family thing. Family things are a new experience to me. All I could see was all my plans had gone for a Burton. And all I could think was that we had our own lives to lead. Anybody up? Oh, in here, love. I'm wondering if you... Oh, there you are. 
thought you might have changed the locks on the door, didn't now, I? Now, don't talk daft, Eddie. Now, now, listen, you pair. Just cut out the squabbling sharpish. I'm not having you at each other's throats, not in my house. I mean, as if I meant a word of that. You know I'd never go to Berry without you. Don't worry. You'd have only got five minutes up the road and I'd have been tagging along. So what are we rowing about, then? Go on, give her a kiss, you big lummox. <laughs> hey, I've had a word with the head lad. He said, I'm a good boy. He said, I know you've got a problem. And leave it with him. So, looks like we'll be losing you, then. Well, short of a miracle, it's looking that way. Well, I'll miss you. The pair of you, I will, honest. <laughs> and how Stan's going to go on with his wind around, well... Oh, he'll be retiring next spring now he's sorted his birth certificates out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, perhaps then he could sell his share to somebody else. Oh, no. No, I couldn't have that. No, we'd rather buy it back ourselves. Yeah, but if Mr Ogden's retiring... No, but the thing is, you see, Marion, Eddie didn't really buy anything as such. Oh, it's all no ill, did it, with the ladders and the cars and the goodwill? That money was a gift you know very well to help us out when we were skint. And let's face it, you've been helping us out ever since, cos that window round's putting out in your pocket. I've had a bob or two out. You've been a tough, Eddie. And now I've got me inheritance. Well, I can't let you leave here without paying you back. I won't take it. Oh, yes, you I'll should. tell you what, I'll settle for half and not a penny more. Oh. Hey, Dozy, have you not noticed anything different? Uh, can't say that, um... Oh, you've had your old calf it died, haven't you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you. <laughs> Just bear with me a minute, Miss uh, Riley, while I explain the breeding process to you, OK? Now, first of all, we let her make friends, so to speak. Then we've got to provide a special breeding cage. Now, in that cage will be a nesting box. When the time is right, both birds will go into the nesting box and nature will take its course. It's almost, in fact, uh, like being married. Don't you agree? Oh, no, I'm sorry, I don't agree at all. I mean, it's not a bit like being married, is it? It's, it's more like having a casual relationship, isn't it? But they're only budgies, Miss Riley. Can you not look on this commercially? Oh, I'd prefer not to. Well, I mean, birds of this breeding can produce valuable offspring. Show birds as win prizes. But, but, but having said that, let me also say, as an expert, these birds are clearly sweet on each other. Well, we've only got your word for that. Well, I don't want to blind you with science, but I could point to certain factors. Well, I'd rather that you didn't. Mm. I mean, well, I just get the feeling that Harriet is not very keen. Of course, she's keen to be a right fool bird if she wasn't. Look, Mr. Sultan, Harriet has led a very quiet, secluded life here with me, whereas it's quite obvious that your Randolph has knocked about a fair bit. Knocked about a bit? My bird's purebred. She ought to be on her bended knees. I'm sorry, but I just don't think it's good enough for her. Oh, rubbish. It is not rubbish. If I'd fetched a lad home called Randy, I know what my mother would have done. She'd have shown him the door. Oh, well, I want to take that uh, tone. There's no more need be said. Suppose you'd call Prince Andrew or someone, it'd be all systems go. Oh, look at that. I'm sure it must seem to you, because I'm being very silly. But... You wait till she lays an egg. You'll be crying out. You're not buying them old carpets, are you? I'm making plans, Stan. Oh. Holiday, is it? No, Chuck, it's not. No, the holiday can wait till next spring when you retire. Oh, I might have some cheap ones for pensioners, eh? Well, we can <laughs> inquire. Just checking up on the kitty, are you? I'm working out a balance on the current account. A kitty's what you have in a crib school. <coughs> right, Stan. I think we've reached a watershed. A watershed? A watershed, you duck egg. It means like a junction. Your birth certificate, my inheritance, and most important of all, us 40th year of married life. You're planning a do, aren't you? I am, Chuck. A ruby wedding do. And I'm going to make it one to remember. The Soap Hour continues with Emmerdale next on Plus. And don't forget you can always check out our website at www.gplus.co.uk.